Oh, Jacob, we can't see the monitor. I don't know if that... Okay, you're live. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Maggie Johnson. Thank you for being patient with us this morning. Um, this wonderful creator deserves the coolest of introductions. Meet my friend, Amina El Kabani. She is a multimedia artist, photographer, and creative director, and she identifies as an art alchemist. Amina, hi. Please tell us what that means to you, your, uh, your title. Well, I am, first of all, so happy to be here. And yeah, I have so many things to say. Um, basically, as an art alchemist, art alchemy is a personal philosophy that to me means that you use art making as a tool for transformation and liberation. So it's really just like using art as a modality for therapy, but also you have a chance to just like make so many new realities and possibility through creating visualizations in these amazing tools that Adobe has to offer. And yeah, as an art alchemist, I love that term because I wear so many hats. I wear all the hats, um, as you can see on my website here, <laughs> photography, art direction, creative strategy, and art alchemy kind of sums it all up for me. Um, so yeah. Thanks for having me. I'm yeah. so excited. It's so cool being able to create things as our jobs because it's just so rewarding, I think, in so many ways, like exactly. you were saying. Um, but yes, awesome. Thank you to everybody tuning in. Please keep your thoughts rolling in the chat. We would love to talk to you and hear what you have to say. Um, Amina, go ahead and tell us what you're going to be talking about today. Yes. What we get to learn. So if you didn't know, there are some really new AI editing tools in town. We're going to be tapping into Firefly, which is Adobe's new AI editing tool. We are going to do some generative fill. We're going to do some generative expand of some images. And all of this is going to come together because today we're focusing on creating visual assets for or with a pre-production in mind for a photo shoot. So as a photographer, and creative producer of all of the things, you know, it's so important to have visual assets for your creative project oh, yeah. to, um, you know, communicate with the client or your audience, right? And yeah. so words can only go so far. They, they do a lot, but a visual representation of what you're trying to do speaks volumes and can really expand the ways in which you can reach your audience and, oh, yeah. you know, get your client on the same page, right? Yeah. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to see this project, yes. our process. I'm not a photographer, so it's going to be cool to see it kind of all in action. But yeah, go ahead, um, hop into it. Where are you going to start? So I'm just going to give everyone a brief overview of what is Adobe Firefly. <sighs> Here we are on the homepage, which is accessible online. I love that it's so accessible because I find that I'm such a big advocate of, you know, reminding everybody that they are all artists. We all have an artist within. We all have the ability and capacity to be creative. And so a tool like this makes it easy to just explore, you know, get used to it, check out some really cool examples, um, check out all of the different offerings that are here for us, and just look at all of the amazing stuff we can do here just by like using our words, right? And so the more specific you can be in AI, that's really the tool. Um, you know, text to image prompting, I really believe is the future. And so oh, yeah. the, the better writer you can become and you know, explore all of these different ways to describe things, the better your generative um, images are gonna come out. So here's just a few examples that they have on the website. I love these so much. These are just different examples of what the background can be changed to, all of the different ways that you can, you know, yeah, create different images based on your text prompts. This is all AI, people. This is crazy to me. And so there's different styles as well. You can generate some different backgrounds, different versions of people, lighting situations. The opportunities are really endless. It and really brings a new meaning to... Um, power in your words, you know? Exactly. It's changing your workflow for sure. It's yeah. insane. So now that we have an idea of what's possible here, I'm going to just give you an example 
of one of the decks that I made for a photo shoot. Let's see it here. Go ahead and drop in the chat how you use AI if you do. Um, in your Adobe products, are you more, do you use it in Photoshop the most? Illustrator, let us know. Yes. So this is a deck, really loose pre-production deck as a photographer. And so these days I am moving past my photography and really stepping into my creative director self, right? And creative producer self. And that means that I need to be able to not only have the vision of what I'm going to create in my head, but also explain that to my client, my collaborators, um, if I'm working with another photographer or makeup artist or, you know, whatever it may be, the collaborator, I need to be able to have creative clarity. And so another way I like to describe myself as a, is as a steward of creative clarity. So this is what a pre-production deck might look like for just a simple photo shoot with a cool editorial concept. Um, so we've got the homepage, you know, the concept title, City Grotto. We've Love got it. the team and the location, everybody's Instagram handles for when the project is done. You can go and tag everybody. Um, some different visual references that I pulled, some photos from the photographer I was working with so that I have you know, their work in front of me, their style, and not only that, but all of the collaborators who haven't seen their work before can get a good idea of what style they work with, you know? Um, another photographer that was on set this day captured some amazing BTS. So as you can see, they have very different styles. That was very intentional. I wanted to bring in, you know, just different lenses to capture something new, right? And then I pulled together this like little makeup reference for the makeup artist. And we've got some descriptions as well as visual references with the descriptions. So this is gonna be fun because we're actually going to use AI to prompt some different makeup styles for our deck, our new deck that we're gonna to build together. Oh, the coolest. Yes. Awesome. So exciting. And all of these descriptors down below are they're really cool because not only did I use that to describe after the fact what I was looking for, I can now use these words in text to image prompts, which is crazy. It is crazy. Yeah. It's it's so cool that also you're able to bring, it's like a good tool in order to bring all these different styles together mm -hmm. um, and be able to adapt all these different styles. You know, I think people get tired of seeing the same thing over and over. Mm -hmm. So it's cool that you have a tool where you can bring, you know, all these different photographers and ideas together into something beautiful. <laughs> it's insane. And like, yeah, this is some visual references for the hairstyles we went with and styling. So, you know, this maybe took me a full afternoon, maybe day and a half or so, because I had to go out there and actually hunt for the images that I wanted to bring into the references. Oh, I'm sure. However, with Firefly, we're gonna be able to just generate so quickly the images of what we're, we have in our mind to ground it into reality through this pre-production deck, and then we'll be able to share that with our collaborators. So yeah, let's get into it. By the way, this is my photo studio. This is called Kismet Kazimi Studio in downtown LA. I also used like scripting to describe a space that I wanted to manifest in real time. And we're actually gonna get into that aspect of things and oh, using I AI for manifestation later in a different stream. So stay tuned for that as well. Yes, we have streams all day today. Well front half of the day today, so make sure that you stick around. Yes, yes. So as a creative director and storyteller, it's really important for me to not only have creative clarity for my clients, but myself as well. So as you know, I'm a storyteller, I'm an artist, I'm a photographer, I wear all the hats, and every year or so I do like an updated shoot that encapsulates all of those things and really redefines my visual identity for myself, my brand identity. So that's what we're gonna do today because I think it's so important that, you know, when you are client facing and when you are connecting with other people's stories over and over again to consistently refresh your own 
and find alignment with the story that you are trying to tell in the world. And that's how I practice this act of storytelling over and over again so that every new client I get, I have the process fresh in my mind. It's so good for staying, and it's important, I feel, you know, to stay relevant in that way, too. Exactly. Um, I think people can really tell when you are keeping things fresh, you know? Yes. On your website or Instagram or brand overall. Exactly. Also, we have somebody that says that they love the walkthrough so far, so that's oh, awesome. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay, one last thing. I'll show you, actually, the photos that came out of that vision board. Just so you know how, how powerful it is to map something out before you actually execute it because this is the final results from that oh. shoot that we planned and this is what we're going to go for today as well this was my city grotto concept i wanted it to feel like i was like emerging from a swamp and oh you know the gosh. stylist nailed it the styling was crazy the hairstyle matched the look and we see the final look come together so beautifully oh. with the swampy makeup and like just the dark overall vibe of like, I could just be wandering through the, this, the city, <laughs> but I just left like a swamp or a grotto. Um, and then, yeah, so when you have a clear concept, it's so much easier and it makes the actual shoot day go that much more smooth. Um, there's also this portion of the shoot that came out wonderfully. And this was really important for me. Again, as I said, it's important to nail who you are as an individual and a brand so that you can communicate that to the world, right? So that's what I wanted to do here. I wanted to have some images that really encapsulate the art alchemist in me, right? So all of that being said, this is my Instagram, by the way, Amina Yasmin, come, come through, follow me. I share lots of tips and tricks on art alchemy. I share my work here, all of my you know designs and storytelling and my campaign work. So if you're looking for some eye candy to eat up on your feed, some intentional stuff, come through, check it out. Your Instagram is a Pinterest board for me, for inspiration, for sure. <laughs> you just go you. to enjoy the beautifulness of it and all the colors that you use. Oh, thank you oh, so much. Somebody says, good morning. Love Firefly to create mock-ups. Yes, it's a game changer. Good morning. Hey, good morning. I'm so happy we're all here. I know. So what should we start with? I think that, I don't know, let's ask the chat. Yes, what do you guys think we should use as inspiration for this mock-up that we're doing? We're just going to start with, and this is controversial, right? I just want to show you the capabilities of this. Um, I also want to note that anything you generate in Adobe Firefly is actually available for commercial use, oh, which is changer. really powerful. However, um, and I wanna give this disclaimer first and foremost, that whenever I'm generating like photorealistic humans, I'm using that specifically for mood boarding. I think that it's important to use real life models in the actual commercial work if you have the means and I think that you really should just because, yeah. you know, the modeling industry, I don't want to see that go away anytime soon. But I do think that these AI tools are really cool for giving you a overview on how to paint the picture of what you're going for. And it might even help you out with casting. It might even help you out with figuring out how you want your model to show up in the final images after you do cast them and bring them into the photo shoot. And uh, yeah. That's what I wanted to share. Yeah. So we're going to start with um, a photo realistic. And you know what? Because this is a photo shoot for personal branding, we're going to start with describing myself. Let's see how good Firefly can actually nail my self description and see if it's close to the reality of who I am. And let's start there. I love it. It's a good test for AI. I think, I think Adobe does a good job, too. They mentioned this at Adobe Max. Um, about using AI and using these tools as exactly that, as tools. And, um, you know, these things are not meant to replace designers or, like you said, models. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think that's a cool, that puts us in a cool position, you know, as creators, um, to be able to expand upon tools. Exactly. And so what I'm doing here, and by the way, let us know in the chat what you want to see after this. I'm going to start with visualizing myself in a photo studio because I want to create a personal branding shoot that 
represents all that I bring to the table when it comes to showing up on set, you know? So we're gonna write photorealistic brown woman photographer with curly and wavy hair, let's say standing in an all white photo studio. This is such a good test to see if it can, you know, what we can capture. Let's figure it out. So you said in your experience, being super specific is the most helpful. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And I think that, okay, cool. These, uh. these women are beautiful. You know, my hair isn't this curly, so maybe I need to go with just wavy. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna see how close it can get. And this is really fun because you can always go back into your prompt and adapt. If you missed that entire like beginning process, all I did was click in this little box here and just start typing. It's that simple to just start exploring what happens. And honestly. I would say they nailed the background. Like that's exactly what I was going for. Yeah. So let's see what happens when I change the prompt from curly hair to wavy hair. Uh, we do have a question. Are we using Adobe Express today? Will you be diving into Adobe Express? I think we might end up there. Might end but up there. today we're gonna focus in the Firefly app um, or web browser, and then we'll bring it into Photoshop and test out some stuff there. Awesome. While we create that mood board. Definitely stick around though, um, Cloud Jenny it looks like, um, because Adobe Express will definitely be showing up a lot throughout the rest of today's live streams. Um, also, she said good morning from England. That's so cool, thanks for tuning in. I love- Good evening. I love when people are here from all over I the know. world. What a good way to connect with so many different, you know, places, people, all the things. It's so crazy. These are, these are so nice. Maybe relaxed wavy hair with a middle part, because today we're rocking the middle part. I'm growing my bangs out. Oh, it's I a usually, process. Yeah, it's such a process. <laughs> I usually have like a whole situation, but I wanted to try something new today. So Look these are these lovely. these cool studios it's giving you. This is so cool. The and light. I'm like, wow, these girls are so pretty. <laughs> Let's just continue expanding on this one. I really like how this one is turning out. So I'm gonna save that to favorites and I'm actually gonna click down on edit and go to generate similar. So this is a great way to, you know, move in a certain direction of the image that speaks to you the most, right? So even though she doesn't look exactly like me, we're gonna pretend. We're gonna pretend like this is, this is something that, yeah, is gonna get us closer and closer. So, okay, this is great, let's say, and something that comes up a lot in mood boarding is like, okay, and just in general, right? Like you always wanna resize something. I personally post on Instagram a lot and Twitter. So I'm gonna change it, the aspect ratio to three by four, which is like a vertical export. Let's do that. More of the way of the world, especially for social media and exactly. proportions wise. Exactly. Um, and while we're reflecting on how beautiful these image, images are, it's also fascinating to think about how else to customize or make this your own, right? If everybody is on this tool and implementing different techniques and we're all kind of starting in the same place, how do we make it our own? Yeah. Um, I think it's important, and this is a really cool tool to use, is personal references. So saving a batch of references that, that are your own and that you have the rights to, which is something that you can also do with um, Adobe Stock. You yes. know, that's another really cool to way, way to use Adobe Stock. But today we're gonna use a reference that is actually my own image, an image of me that I collaborated with a friend on. So it's gonna also show you um, the disclaimer. This, this disclaimer that I just said, you need to have the rights to any third party images before you upload your images for references here. Oh, we do have a quick question. Um, somebody's talking about the commercial use and your experience you've been able to use, you know, anything you've generated out into the world and in your work. Exactly, Yeah. exactly. And that's what makes this great is that you have those rights to right. use this. Um, I think before, they, you didn't, but now you do because they've perfected or not perfected 
the technology is always going to be changing. But they got it to a place that feels really good, that feels like something that um, not only looks good, but feels good, represents your brand, and has the metadata that gives you the rights. Yeah, so. absolutely. So yes, it's the possibilities are endless mm-hmm. between stock and Firefly. Exactly. Oh my gosh, look at the results. That's insane. So this is crazy, right? Because before we had the photo studio situation going on, it was very, it was beautiful, but it was mundane. It wasn't necessarily as fun as I wanted to give. And yeah. as you saw before, a lot of my work is very conceptual. It's colorful. It's um, surrealistic. It has those qualities. And so this is starting to fit my vibe a little more. Do you care to sh- quickly show us the image that you uploaded again? Yeah, let's do it. Just to kind of review that and to see kind of where we started. 100%. So I would let's love to check see that. that out. Oh, we have um, Val Gurr. She says, amazing work. Thank you. We're going to get so much deeper, y'all. Make sure you stick around because yes. we're going to go there. Yes, and we're also reading, reaching the halfway mark. So now I feel like this is a good you yeah. know, point. Let's start pivoting. Yeah. Let's do it. So this is the reference image we used. Look. This is like representative of my higher self. And that's kind of like my North Star, right? Um, that was actually a photo composite which is really fun. And we'll get into that too, how you can actually create photo composites in Photoshop using generative fill. So for the sake of this, let's just generate a photo studio. Photo studio. It's kind of like a base. Yeah, background photo, you know? And let's see, prompt is too short. So, you know, you have to be descriptive, like we said earlier. So oh, that's let's so say funny. I've never, I haven't encountered that yet. That's funny. Yeah, all white photo studio with a psych wall, and it's interesting because it's still sticking with this reference image. If you notice that, like, okay, you know what? I'm actually trying to generate something different now. I don't necessarily want this to look like that. This is so cool, though. I'm like, wait, what? what? Okay, Firefly. This is crazy (gasps) because, okay, this just gave me an entirely new idea. This is why I love Adobe products because I love to go down the rabbit hole. I love to just follow my creativity. And I often end up in places, like, I love all of these, so I'm going to save them to favorites. Uh, Don't you wish we could go there? Uh, to exactly. that place. I love that we can create our own little world right now. That's awesome. This is amazing. We. <laughs> we. No, it's, we're co-creating yes. a world together. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm actually going to save all of these. And it's cool because, okay, look at this. Content cre- credentials will be applied to let people know it was generated with AI. This is amazing because yeah. in the metadata, it's going to say AI. So you can't trick anyone online. You can't go on any of the socials and say, I this is a photograph I took, they'll know. So make sure you are transparent with what you're saying is AI and what you're saying is photography, yeah. et cetera. Um, but this is really cool because I also produce events and I'm always looking for new references for my events. So this is also great because I could pitch this to a client as part of an immersive experience and I actually have like the world building ability to create a world that feels like my images that feels like my uh yeah my composites my my like creative edits i'm so blown away by these this is awesome this was such a success the perfect image selections apparently yes so let's go into photoshop now and pull in some of the fun images that i just downloaded Oh, this is so cool. It feels like like winter formal or something. Yeah, yeah. Kind of kind of um, technology meets whimsy almost. Right. Um, Kristen at non-graphic designer. Um, hello, friends tuning in a little late, but happy to be here. We're so glad you're here. Hello. <laughs> hello. So what we're gonna try now, I love this so much, but I feel like I would want to pitch this as a location for the shoot. And now I want to start to visualize what I might want to build in my set. And also, I kind of want to see what the rest of the room would look like. So let's imagine, and we're going to use uh, Generative Expand for this. This is a new tool that 
Firefly is integrated into Photoshop with, with this tool. So all you have to do is drag your photo from your file into Photoshop. It instantly opens as a new file, working file. And yeah, now we're gonna go down to the crop tool. We're here. We're gonna go up here on the right, make sure that generative expand is clicked. And we're just gonna go ahead and drag this out, right? Drag it out, let's see. And I want this to be not that much bigger, maybe like, yeah. A little extra. A little bit of extra space, just so I can imagine like the foreground and the ceiling. Let's try that. Hello to Alejandro and RB, they said hi. Hi everybody, I'm so glad you're here. So we're gonna just go ahead and click that and see how the technology works on its own before giving it any extra prompts. Uh, this has been such a game changer, I know, for so many people's workflows. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to go in and manually, oh my gosh, look, manually paint all of that. Can you imagine? <laughs> this is crazy. For all of our designers out there, this is a great tool because when you are making a deck or like a, what's the word? Maybe even a one pager and you don't want just words, you want visuals to go with the words or maybe you're, work, you're working and making some graphics for social media. This is something I would post to my page as is but if I want to, you know, go and throw some text in there for myself later, now because I use the generative expand tool, I actually had negative space to put some text into. So I just opened a new text box and now I'm saying, okay, for my client, if I'm pitching this idea to a client and saying, okay, we're going to now um, say that this is a photo studio, whoops, okay. And just as kind of, if you're just now joining, um, we are talking, or Amina is talking about how she uses AI to kind of pull inspiration for some of the work that she does. Um, and is it true, like this is what you use to kind of help your clients visualize, well, and other artists, visualize yeah. you know the possibilities of your work exactly yeah. I think that it's important to um, to focus on visual communication mm. as a key aspect of any and all productions right like to use visual communication tools not only for your clients but for yourself like find creative clarity for yourself first before you show up on set so that you know all of the beats that you're trying to you know catch yeah. So, um, yeah. So for my client, I would say, okay, set will be a photo studio with twinkly lights, dimly lit. There will be a two light setup and lights, maybe like I'll call that bar lights above. And yeah, we're going to go ahead and Make this a smaller size. We're gonna change the text color to white. It's too small now, so let's say <laughs> Don't 150. Don't you hate it. <laughs> um, but it's so cool and how quickly you can change text here in Photoshop. And what's great, another thing to know if you're a graphic designer or anything, visual communicator, you can highlight the text and actually just hover over all of these different fonts until you see one that fits the vibe of your photo. Oh yeah, I've used several programs where it's not like that and it's a pain having to <laughs> click into every one. Exactly, and yeah. try them all out. This has saved my life literally since I was in high school as the yearbook editor. Oh wow, oh, <laughs> awesome. I feel like a lot of creatives end up doing yearbook in high school. It's like a yeah, gateway, <laughs> you know? it was, it really was. Um, so now that I know that I want this text here, even though I didn't even initially want to put text in this, but I like it now. Mm -hmm. I like it now because now I have a visual descriptor that I can use in my mood board. So that's great. Set will be a photo studio with twinkly lights, dimly lit. There will be a two light setup and bar lights above. And so let's get into some generative fill here. We've used the generative expand to make the canvas bigger 
and fill in the blanks for what our photo studio location might look like. Now, let's go into the lasso tool and I'm just gonna highlight this light right here because I don't necessarily know that I want that kind of light. Let's use a different kind of light. Mm -hmm. Hmm. What kind of light should I type? Let's say um, spotlights. Yeah, with orange light coming Ooh, orange. from it. With all the blues, obviously orange and blue complement. So that would that could be a really nice addition. To yeah. This. Uh, Emma said yearbook kids forever. Yes, I was also yearbook kid. That's really? Funny. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I, I love feel like it. it just like formed my brain creatively. Yes. Like it so helped young. me really see all of the different ways that oh, I could yeah. be, you know just a creative and put it all together, you know, oh, yeah. all creating all these different pieces. So this is interesting. It didn't necessarily generate at first what I wanted, but now that I'm looking at the variations on the right, this third one is very similar to what I was going for. Oh yeah. That's actually pretty cool. And so I like that one. I'm going to click generate again and see if it generates something more similar to that. It's got good colors in it. So that is, I feel like colorful was the direction you were going in. Exactly. So that was successful. Exactly. Okay, okay. You know, this is going to be really helpful for someone who actually knows what these lights are called. Yes. <laughs> if you know what these lights are called, let us know let specifically. Us know. So you can use them in exactly. your shoots. But honestly, I really like this one. I feel like it ex it explains visually what I was going going for so yeah let's st stick with that oh we got more yearbook kids awesome oh, so cool <laughs> how funny so let's see i really like that for our first one um now i'm like oh i want to do this again for experiential design this is crazy oh yeah art installation <laughs> or something yeah so now that we have our location set let's just go ahead and export it we're going to export this file. We're going to just do a quick export as a PNG. That's like always a great, you know, way to um, export something that's a large file. Mm. Uh, I'm going to export this and I'm going to save it as backdrop location for shoots. Um, it's also really important to stay organized when you are in this creative flow. So just create a good habit. Um, now, right here and now, you know what I'm saying? It's oh, so yeah. important. And so we have Adobe Live, we have personal references. Now let's make a folder that says Adobe Live, um, Firefly, Exports. It's so easy to fall into the final, 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 final exactly. with three L's. Exactly. Naming conventions. What yes. are your naming convention tricks? Let us know if you have any specific religious conventions that you stick to. Yeah, that's always an important one for me. I always want to know. Um, let's see. Let's go back to Firefly. And okay, so I definitely want one location to be a in-studio location, but I also... Anytime I have like a modeling client, like if they're doing a personal empowerment shoot or a brand identity shoot, I always make sure to recommend that they use more than one background for their images so that they can create more visual impact. Yeah. So let's say you're creating like a visual branding photo shoot, right? And you're gonna need photos for your website, you're gonna need photos for your socials, you're gonna need photos for press maybe, maybe someone does a cool article about you or maybe you have a really cool event that you're prepping for like this one, which I did have to send over some <laughs> headshots for, yes. right? So there's all of these different use cases for what you're gonna need to um, do. So let's think about where I might want beyond a photo background, like in-studio situation, I might want to be out in nature and I don't necessarily have the time to go out and scout yeah. different locations. So let's go ahead and generate some locations to use. One of my favorite places is Joshua Tree. Oh, yes. And I've always wanted to shoot there, but I don't necessarily have time to scout it. So let's generate some images of Joshua Tree landscape. 
and see if we can pull that for our visual deck. I've never been, but I've seen the dreamiest imagery from there and artwork. I've seen a lot of artwork um, from Joshua Tree. It seems to be very inspiring, it's, you know? It's literally so inspiring. I love this and it's one of my favorite places on earth. I love how accurate these images are of what it actually looks like and feels like to be there. Um, but now that I'm looking at it, I'm thinking I want mm. to see it maybe more like in, in the sunset. I know? was going to say yeah. sunset, like golden, more golden energy is what I pictured when I pictured Exactly. This. And I also want to note that when you look on the this little sidebar on the right, you have different content types that you can choose from. And so right now we're in the photo module, but if I were to click the art module and click generate, it's gonna completely change the dynamic of what it's gonna look like. Let's see. Let's see. And how about you cancel your flight back home and I'll take you to Joshua Tree. Okay, let's go. Yeah. Let's do it. I yeah. mean, what? why not? Why not, right? Everything can be canceled and shifted around, right? <laughs> yeah, you gotta just shift into what you wanna do. <laughs> Okay, I literally love these art styles. This is beautiful. Oh, more the energy. Oh, so cool. You can also shift visual intensity. Let's see what that does here. Definitely captured more of that golden hour that you were achieve trying to achieve. What did you change the prompt to? I didn't actually change it. Joshua oh. just Joshua Tree Landscape. And okay. what I shifted was the actual content type. Okay. So I shifted from photo to art. Um, you can also go down here and shift color and tone and lighting as well. So it's cool here because now I can actually, instead of typing golden hour into the prompt, there's actually lighting situations that have golden hour as an option here. Oh my gosh, how funny. So let's click that and let's go back to photo as a content type and click generate. So where is your favorite place in Atlanta? Favorite place in Atlanta, that's a good question. I spent most of the time in Midtown mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of graphic design campaigns in Midtown so mm. I'm biased. Okay. <laughs> I love that. Okay so more of the golden hour imagery for sure. So we're getting some good golden hour options here. I'm feeling it. So just to kind of recap this is for you know more of a outdoor shoot inspiration right exactly okay. so again like if you're doing a personal branding shoot you should really tap into multiple locations it's really helpful to kind of give you diversity in your images and i would love joshua tree to be one of the options i'm just going to go ahead and click this one i like this one a lot um, but now I'm curious to generate similar. Oh, we have a question actually. Ooh, yes. Um, from Allison, she asks, I find my prompts are sometimes way off. Any tips? Interesting. Yes. I would say journal, write. Oh yeah. Get clear on journaling, look into journaling prompts and also just like ask yourself the questions of what, who, what, where, when, why, and how. Oh yeah. And, um, Something that really helps me is actually looking at my images before. Um, so for example, if I go to my website here and I click my portfolio, I love to study my own work because it helps me know myself better. And so if I were to click into this image of FKA Twigs and describe it, Look how that's cool. gonna really help me to understand what I would actually say when I'm prompting AI. Yeah. So it, when I'm looking at this, and and this is a practice that you can use outside of just like trying prompts, yeah. but just like practice looking at art and describing it. And you can actually pull up Firefly as well and um, use the same description that you would use for the images. So if yeah. I were to say, okay, beautiful woman wears, you know, maybe coquette style hat that drapes over her face in red lipstick with bold eyeliner under the eye as well as over the eye um, in a harsh lighting setting. Yeah. Standing in a, what, how is she standing? I think she was like squatting almost. Yeah, yeah. Um, like... And then she's also wearing a leopard print frilly top. Um, with gold jewelry and braids coming out of the hair. Yeah. Right? So I got very descriptive there. If I were to say just girl stares off into the distance, it wouldn't be descriptive enough. So 
the practice of being an artist is the art of noticing, mm -hmm. right? So when you are practicing your photography or your prompting, try to actually just notice the details of what's in front of you and describe that yeah. as a practice for you know, learning how to prompt AI. Yeah. And it's also a, just a great practice to go back to the Adobe Firefly homepage and explore some of the different, um, all of the different ways that people have already used Firefly yeah. and AI. So it's cool because you have all of these amazing, you know, generated generated images already from text to prompt and it really gets your creativity going it really gets you inspired as it says get inspired this is literally the purpose of this tool yes. get inspired start to understand the different ways in which ai is interpreting your words but your your prompts aren't off you just are still learning how to um, work with this AI. It's like a synergy that you have to develop. And yeah. I'm still developing it too. I'm a forever student. Yeah, so. as we all want to be. You know, yes. we talked about this earlier. We don't want to ever know everything because then there's nothing else to learn. Exactly. Um, yeah, so we are, we do have five minutes left, four minutes left. So if you want to just kind of recap yeah. um, all of these awesome tools and tips and tricks that you talked about today. 100%. Um, everybody can take their last notes. Yeah. I know I've learned some things today. So I'll leave you with this. What we did was we decided to generate a photo studio from scratch using a reference image um, that was a photo of myself in a surrealistic situation. We pulled it into Firefly and we exported it, dragged it into Photoshop, used the generative expand, and then started to write um, over it so that we could pull that into a mood board in the future for our future clients. Ugh. I highly, highly recommend this process um, and I highly recommend writing it all out on paper first as well. Like everything for me starts on paper yeah. and I love to bring it in to really make it more concise into Firefly. So, you know, that really helps also just like browsing in Adobe Stock to get some cool creative ideas, oh, using yeah. Adobe Firefly, the homepage, and tapping in with your community on Discord. I'm sure there's a lot of really fun conversation yeah. happening there about this and tips and trips shared there. Humans um, need humans and artists need artists, exactly. for sure. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm so excited to continue to use this tool. It's it's just a crazy, like, I can't even fathom that this is real now, I know. and it's a part of our workflow. How have you used it? Yeah, I use, um, I do a lot of editing in um, Photoshop, where I've used the generative expand a ton. And then also, I'd say the most is generative recolor in Illustrator, which, shameless plug, we're going to talk about later today. Oh, so yeah, um, speaking of that, um, we have a lot more in store for you today. Um, you get to see both of us again at some point today. Um, so please stick around. We're going to talk a little bit more about Firefly, about um, Photoshop, and Adobe Express. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Do you have any last thoughts? I just want to encourage all of you to continue to stay curious in your creativity. That's necessary in all of our lives because our brains love novelty, so the more you explore, the more creative you can be. And don't get intimidated, just get curious. That's it. Uh, we need that on a poster <laughs> in all of our life. Yeah, thank you guys. Again, please stick around today. Um, we have a lot more in store for you. There's always lots to learn. That's the cool thing about these products being so advanced and intricate is that the possibilities are endless. Absolutely. Yeah, so thank you so much. We'll see you soon. See you in a few minutes. See you soon, everybody.
Hi, everybody. We are back. Um, welcome again. If you missed our last one, my name is Maggie Johnson, and welcome to Adobe Live. Um, this is my good friend, Ted. He oh. is a digital artist who focuses on photo manipulation, and in all of our professional opinions, he is a Photoshop master. Oh, so we have lots to learn from him. Um, yeah. Ted, how are you today? Good, good. Very excited to be here. Yes. And, you know, back with everybody. So it's like, yeah, thanks for having me again. Yes. So as always, please feel free to drop any thoughts or questions you have in the chat. We are both eager to answer those. And yeah, why don't you tell us about yeah. what we're going to work on today? So um, today we're going to work on something interesting. Um, I'm going to create something in uh, Adobe Photoshop, which is going to be this file right here. I'm going to show you the process how to make this. And then we're going to bring to Adobe Express and animate it and then um, do some like design. So you would kind of see like an ASMR version of the art. So which I saw that like a few weeks ago on Photoshop's channel. They share like ASMR. So these are like some of the um, the one that I have made so far. So um, let me know if you guys can hear the audio. But just like, you know, kind of like a interesting one that I see like I can break down my steps yes. in editing and then also do like an interesting sound like a foley or just like oh this is a, what the mountain sounds like this is what yes. the cloud sounds like you know and before I had to use uh, Photoshop and screen record or oh. doing the layer like timeline on there to uh, record this but then I was like oh like I forgot like on Adobe Express there's animation you can actually yeah. Drop the whole PSD file onto there and then do the animation per layer. So I bet it's that a pretty fun your, thing. I bet that chopped your workflow yeah. a lot, didn't so it? So you would see, like, I actually had pre animated the whole thing. So at the very end of the stream, you get to see the final looking of this. So this is, like, pretty fun. Um, on this video, it's very Look. interesting because, like, um, someone like so is like, oh, I never thought about, like, how the moon will sound like. I was like, yeah. I never thought about it too till I have to animate it. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. I can only imagine the sounds yeah. that you have to try to decipher for that. Okay, so first let's go to Adobe Stock. Um, it is right here. So usually, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar, but I'll go to Adobe Stock and there's like the free sections um, that you can download a free image to use. So mainly I use this is because I, I want you guys to download the same photo and then to like practice and add it with me, right? Um, yeah. I would love to share the PSD file if we can find a way. Um, but yeah, so these are some of the um, the photo we're gonna be needing. So this is like kind of like present riding camel and deserts and stuff. So I have them, all of them, right here. So these will be the photo we're gonna be used. Um, feel free to pause the Ooh. stream so you can see all the numbers on there. So you can download these are all free. Yeah. And then we are gonna go on to. Photoshop. You know? That's awesome. You can do it right along with us today if you yeah. want. Or later if you, you know, have oh, yeah. time later. Whoever's today. watching this later, you can see. Um, so I personally love just dragging the photo directly onto the canvas because yeah. that automatically converted to smart object. Yeah. Right? So for those of you who are not familiar, uh, smart object, I don't, do you have a better way to explain it? I just know like it kind of like keep it smart but like <laughs> yeah it keeps the resolutions and all like all the details added and you put on into it so you yes. can always double click and then go and edit it the original photo yes it's like it's kind of like a group right yeah I, I would think that's a good way to describe it it allows it to be manipulated without being destroyed I guess yeah. you could say maybe yeah not destroyed too much yeah. right so I can hold like comment T and like you know just like transform into like as large or as small as I want but it will always keep like a high resolution you know yeah which is a uh, um, something uh, for me because I'll usually like turn my R to print so I oh, need like okay. everything to be like super sharp and details right oh yeah okay so we're gonna build our foreground what size do you usually work on what canvas oh, yeah. size do so you usually... canvas size I usually do for uh, Instagram so like like four by five Okay. Ratio. So I do 16 by 20 inch. Uh, you can see like these are all different files that I tried it out yeah. sometimes <laughs> for uh, Instagram story or reels. It's like 9 by 16. Uh, I put on inch and 300 uh, DPI resolution. So 300 it's like, DPI. Okay. Yeah, it's making like super sharp, but yeah. not super large, right? Yeah. And I can always resize it because they're all in smart object. Yeah. And you know, can export for like TIFF, you know, like for printing. Oh, yeah. Okay. So let's see. I'm just going to do. Usually I'll use W, quick selection tool to remove the sky. Um, you could also just go on like uh, 
edit it. Uh, no, sorry, select and then do the sky. Oh, um, brilliant! Yeah. I didn't know that actually. Select. Well, let's try it because sometimes it works well, sometimes it doesn't work well. Okay. You know? But most of the time it works like accident. Um, see, Look! Yeah. Oh my gosh, One it did it in just a second. That's amazing. Right? This is like lazy Photoshop with me. We love it. <laughs> not lazy, smart way to smart. work on Photoshop. Smart. Work smarter, yeah. not harder. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. We have lots of hellos from Catherine, Cody, Ivan. Ali, it looks like. Uh, hello. hello, everybody. So, like, one thing I like and also not dislike but challenges is that when you do selecting sky, right, it does a very fine job. Yeah. But that also means that it will select, like, a little bit of the bottom of the uh, the foreground or elements of yeah. that. Um, so it kind of feathers, I guess. Kind of feathering. So when you invert it, right, um, it's like if you put anything behind... It actually looks pretty good because it's mm. blending more naturally. Oh, um, yeah. But for me, uh, I like to keep it like super sharp, just because I know, like we're gonna, uh, oops, we're not replacing the uh, sky. We're actually just gonna put something behind it. Got you. Great. Okay. So, oh yeah, all the short keys like when you hold shift and then whatever short key the tool you do, you can like rotate. Around the the tool. Oh, I don't brilliant! Know, if you know that, yeah. Yeah, so it was you did shift. Shift, yeah, and then W, w is the selection tool, right? So got you. Holding shift, it rotates around. So just like this, real quick, and then yeah. we're gonna shift W, everybody. If you're not down. using hotkeys, it'll change your life. So make yeah. sure <laughs> to start studying up on those. So the other things I usually after I select the sky, um, I can mask it out, but we'll leave like a very tiny line here. Um, so just. Make sure you clear that off. Oh you know, yeah, brushing off. I'm using the uh, the brush tools. On the I guess layer that's mask. a benefit to using not the select guy. I guess. Yeah. If so you just yeah. So that's a different thing. Yeah, yeah. So just making sure everything's clear. Right. Okay. And then so the concept I have is this person is riding a camel in the desert, and then there's like a giant moon yeah. that's on the ground that he's just passing by. Right. Yeah. So obviously it's not like super original concept, but it's just something fun that we can all practice with. No, it's great. It's dramatic. It's good. It's attractive. Yeah. We love it. I like surrealism and concept art and video games. Yeah. So these are like the stuff like I enjoy making. You know. Oh yeah. Um, so that's I could see. totally see your work being in video games. Like I could totally see oh, that'd be that so cool. translation. I was like, oh, that'd be like so cool to design like a video art world. Yeah. But like you everyone should do who, it. Oh, but Let's everyone who it. work in the industry are so like expert level already. Oh. I'm just like, I can compete. I need more practice. Oh, oh practice. I see. I need more practice because they're so good. Um, okay, so what I did just now, I just moved these. Uh, stars with the background to behind this layer so let's rename this so you guys can see full ground and sky there you go it's doing that so it's easier to understand what goes where and then if i need to add it to something you know just oh yeah it's right there yeah okay and we're gonna do a little adjustment layer right here it's right if you is it on this window adjustment so i think you yes. can go on window adjustments and this will pop out so it's like the uh hue saturation layer hue and saturation got it yeah options and then clipping mask is the same thing right here yeah that was and a good thing that you mentioned i know um a lot of creatives i know um it's hard to keep your workspace manageable so i um, mean if you ever lose a tool you can go to window and find that tool very easily yeah um so it's just like um, I don't know if a lot of people use that, but I love it right there. Oh, no, yeah. I mean like this sections of like the, oh, oh yeah, you. adjustment. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just want. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> I'm like yes, adjustment, adjustment, but adjustment. Yeah. <laughs> so nothing too complicated. So um, oh, very nice. Yeah, I'll probably like desaturate. So it's like very blue hue on the mm -hmm. back, which looks really cool. It creates the contrast, but I like them to like kind of blending more. So. I'll probably even just do like a quick color adjustment and maybe turn it a little bit more red-ish. Oh, yeah. Warm, warm color. I feel so, like that definitely yeah. helps it work with the, you know, foreground that you have yeah. there. Okay, so we got Color matching wise. When it was blue, blue, it was a little distracting almost. Yeah, so there, there is this little edge, but we'll fix that later. <laughs> okay, <laughs> later, later. Oh, we'll push it to we'll later. We'll probably cover it somehow. Okay, <laughs> so um, we're going to add our moon. Well, let me know, chat, if I'm going too fast, because, you know, like, I kind of, like, practice this in my yes. head. Like, you can do this in your sleep, probably. No, not probably not, but <laughs> <laughs> in the, that's where I draw my uh, canvas and concept. You yeah. Know? Okay. So. Yeah, let us know if you have any questions about um, what he's doing. Oh, this might be a good thing to mention. I yeah. see that you created a layer mask. Mm-hmm. 
um, and that's how he was editing things. I know maybe you did already mention that, but that is a good way to erase without erasing. Is that right? Yeah. So instead of let's see, instead of like actually directly editing on the photo, um, I want to always like. For example, if I'm like five steps done, right? I want to go back to like, oh, I miss this little edge right here. Or if I accidentally like erase too much, right? So if I if I found something like that, right? Yeah. And it's very easy just to go back to that layer mask and then brush it back, you know? Yes. So I can always like fix onto that and erase things instead of like, you know, the deconstructed way, right? Yes. Like, yeah, how to yeah. go back in. So this is like a, a method like I prefer to work with is like this. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Non-destructive because we don't have time to... I yes, I got you. <laughs> I got you. It's Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the, we don't have time to redo things, you know? We don't want yeah. to waste our time having to redo things all the it's time. It's just like easier to control things, right? Because yeah. like, otherwise, like, if you... Like it happens to me before that I made a mistake. I yeah. didn't see till very end. Oh. I was so like, it's oh, so crushing. Because yeah. then <laughs> now I have to go all the way back to find the source file yeah. to put it on there. Because like, um, if I send this file to someone else, mm -hmm. like they get to um, have everything too, right? Yeah. So like they don't have to like look for the original file and fix it themselves. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, it looks like we have a question. Is there yes. a key combination for adjustment layers? So are there, there any is, specific right? that you? Let me see, because I know they're in layer layer styles. It's in here. I don't know if there's a short key for that. Yeah, I'm not sure, actually. It's usually it's on under layer, right, with, like, yeah. new adjustment layer and stuff. So I'm not sure if there's, like, a short key. Yeah, I, I know there's... Know, I don't know. Maybe, I know, I don't know. <laughs> maybe it doesn't exist. Maybe it doesn't exist. <laughs> I know there's a way to create your own, mm -hmm. and so oh, I'm wondering... Really? Well, okay, maybe I'm speaking too soon. If you don't, maybe I'm being wrong, but I'm oh, no, pretty sure I'm there's a way there. to, yeah. <laughs> to shift your hotkeys. So you might be able to go into your settings, and then I think it's shortcuts or short keys. Yeah. And maybe so. you can look there. But anyways, yeah. If you go to Windows Sorry. and Adjustments, then it will pop up over there. Yeah, like so if you, you go have. on Window, Adjustment. This is like my workspace. I yeah. like it like this way. Because um, you have like the preset and then all these like single adjustments, which is like these are my favorite sections just yeah. to have. Um, so I can just move my mouse over on the top right and click to use, right? Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I have my layer on the right side. And then this this window right here, the navigator, um, for me is like when I'm probably having to use, like when I'm working on something all the time, I only look at these little sections. Yes. I need to step away to see what the whole picture looks oh, like. Oh, yeah. Right? But instead of like walking away, now I can just kind of like see the whole composition here, no matter how close I am working. Oh, yeah. I can see like, oh, where should I put the moon, right? So I'm just gonna turn this to screen real quick. Like, where should I put the moon and how big it is? And instead of like keep going like back and forth, it's, yeah. I have it on my right side window. You can see you know? the whole thing, that's yeah. awesome. So that's like a very uh, convenient like um, window for me. I learned I found a concept artist. Oh, uh, so love I was it. like, what is that? He's like, oh, Navigator, you gotta have it on. I was like, okay, say I, less. I need this, yeah, <laughs> say less. You guys should try using the Adjustments tab and the Navigator tab in your workspace. Yes, and then uh, I have my history on here, so it's like, you know, you can go all the way back or like see anything. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then the bottom is like the property. So it's like uh, when I have adjustment layers, I can click on it and then the property is like help me to adjust everything that I need to, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So just like doing this and that, right? Clipping on that. Um, yeah, does your workspace looks like mine or like very different? Very similar. I very have, similar. Nice. yeah, I don't have history as much. Um, I don't feel like I look at that as much, but I do more graphics than Photoshop editing, I would say. So that might change, you know? That's true, I actually yeah. do use adjustments quite a bit. I'm glad. Nice. I don't know a lot of people that do. I know some people are levels people. Oh yeah, levels. You know, levels are hard. Levels I are think levels hard. People are like higher level than me. You know? Yes. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys use levels or adjustments? I know they're not totally interchangeable, but I feel like those are generally. Uh, this level, you gotta do this like highlights and shadows. The red. I was like. Uh, Somebody needs to come teach us the lesson on how yeah. to better use levels. Like but. I'm a more simple person. I was like, yeah. oh, I can do this and that instead of like look at the graph. I'm yes. Like, I'm not. I'm just not gonna do levels. But levels are great. They uh, are great. If you're a master of levels, great job, you know. <laughs> also, layers is a must. I have layers on everything always. Oh, yeah. I don't know if anyone work without layers. <laughs> I know. If you do, the you're the stronger person. I know. Yeah. <laughs> monster. You're the chosen one, you know. I, I can you know, you're, uh, you're, you, you're better than me. <laughs> <laughs> if you work without layers, you're the chosen one because yeah. you're above us. Okay, so let's jump back to the concept of uh, working on Moon. 
Um, so there's like few different options you can do the moon blending, right? The one that uh, most one is more common is that everybody know is kind of changing the uh, blending layer. Um, so you can just put it onto your screen, right? Lighten, screens, all this. Screens like my favorite one. Oh yeah. Yeah, when you have like a darker background, it make the object like bright. So oh it's, like, yeah, kind of, like, good to know. Glowing um, style. So this is like the one I usually like to use. However, um, sometimes you can see like it's transparent. So you can mm. see like what's behind and we don't, well, there's cert a few other ways you can fix it. Yeah. Um, by either create a new layer and then you pin it like a darker color underneath it. So oh, like interesting. That's one way to do it. Uh, but in this case, uh, I want to have more editing later on. So I'm actually gonna create uh, a layer mask and then just select the moon only. Okay. Right? And you might be thinking like, oh, some easy way with the select tool is like you can just select the black background or just the moon, right? Yeah. But if you do that with this toolbar, by the way, I love the toolbar. It's so easy with oh, like yeah. all the hockey right here. Oh, yeah. Um, but if you do something like that, you'll notice the edge is like very, what do you call that? Edgy? Yeah. <laughs> the, the edge is very edgy. The edges are a little edgy. <laughs> uh, edges zigzag, edgy. you know, yeah. not super smooth. And obviously there's many ways you can fix this, but a very quick um, easier way that I personally like to do is just to create a circle and then mask it, right? Oh, so yeah. So you can absolutely. drag it, hold shift to hold that, or you can do, I think it's option and shift, and select somewhere around the center and then just draw a circle, like from the center of the uh, circle. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so option, I think, okay. yeah, option shift. So maybe it's alt shift on PC. Yeah. I'm not sure, but try it out. It's either control or alt. So and then do that, right? So this give me like a very smooth circle edge. Well, this, I guess this is where you can argue like, oh, the moon is not completely circle or not, but in my world it is. <laughs> oh, we have somebody that says groups is the most. Is groups? Yes, group is the most. Groups Like is... right here, group. Oh, group. Oh, layer yeah. groups. Yes, right? of course. That's, that's I'm assuming layer groups? <laughs> yes, let yes. us know. Yeah, David, let us know if you meant something other than that. Um, but we're assuming layer groups. Yeah, group absolutely. So um, obviously, if I wasn't doing live or wasn't turning the file to someone else, my layer might look like crazy. Yeah. But I try my best to um, clear, like simplify it right now because yeah. I noticed that sometime when I went back to work on like some old RPs, it's really nice for yeah. the future me to have a clean version to work on instead oh, yeah. of like, what is this layer doing? <laughs> what is affecting this layer? Where's that brush coming from? Yeah. You know? <laughs> Especially when you do something like, like you were talking about drawing, you know, a darker area underneath the moon. If yeah. you just had like a dark spot, you're like, well, why did I do that? Why did yeah. I have just a random <laughs> like, dark where, spot? Where did it come from, you know? Okay, yes, David said gr layer groups. Yes. yes. R a must, 100%. Okay, so. Two thumbs up. Thanks, David. <laughs> so we're going to put this moon somewhere around there. Well, obviously not there, uh, but there, right? Perfect. So the reason why I put in there, so it's because, in a way, so let's think about this, right? So if I put it in this foreground right here, right, that also means that I have to draw some lights right here, probably underneath. I'm just doing some, some lights here, some lights there, right? And then yeah. there's going to be some shadows. Like, imagine how a glowing ball is on a piece of scent, right? Yeah. But to make it more interesting or easier for me personally is to hide it behind right here, behind this hills right here. So it's just like oh, hiding yeah. right there. So it looks like there's a dapple field. There's like layers onto it, right? So That's it's something. still on the sand without being... Great the front face. is being kind of covered, so you right. can create like a more dramatic lighting. Right. Um, that's something I notice on my artwork too. Like sometimes I do feel like my designs are pretty flat, quote unquote flat. You know, so it's a very similar perspective. You go on my Instagram, you can see like this is the style I have. But yeah. looking at other like concept artists, I was just like, oh, I want to learn how to make it more layers. Yeah. Right? Like more dimensional. See, yeah, more dimensional. Yeah. It's like a depth, like going back in there instead of just everything flat, right? Yeah. So that's something I noticed since college. It's like 10 years ago. I noticed I have that problem. Oh, I, no. I don't think anyone's critiquing. <laughs> I don't think anyone's saying. I, I'm still haunted by my professor. Like, <laughs> this is so flat. I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I don't know I'm what to tell you. I'm trying my best, you know? Yeah, she, she, she gave us an example just like, um, just imagine like, don't make the zebra. Like she, I don't know why she used the example of zebra, but don't make it just look at flat, like laughing, right? Make it look like, uh, a quarter off, oh, right? Yeah. Like uh, something more dynamic, like three stuff. quarter views. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. You know? So I always remember that, even though I st still make the same mistakes. Sometimes. Shout out to your professor. She's still professor. in your brain on the yeah. daily. Okay, so you're selecting. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, haunting you. 
in a good way. I love I love my profession. Oh, They're yeah. great. Yeah. Okay, so I'm selecting this part. Oh, somebody says this or Jacob says this stock photo reminds me of the Mac OS. Um I can't. Oh say yes. It. The um the desktop. Yeah. That update. That was a few updates ago. It does look like that. It's it kind does. of it was kind of moody. Sorry. I was I was using um what do you call that the quick selection tool and I was trying to like draw over it but it kept disappearing so oh I'm just gonna hand mask it oh awesome so you are still selecting but you're yeah. just doing it with a brush oh yeah okay so let me talk about that so not to interrupt your flow oh yeah, yeah I forgot so what I'm doing right now is that um after I select it I press Q it enter this quick select mode, I believe. Yeah. Um, so the, I set it to, you can do it on the setting and preference. Um, so the part that's red means it's not selected. And the part that doesn't have the red color on means it's selected. Yeah. Right, so obviously using the brushing tool and then different opacity, you can select different amount of it, right? Yeah, um, that's so helpful, because <coughs> especially when you're working like dark on dark, I'm sure it gets hard to like, yeah. you know, sometimes see where you're working. Mm -hmm. So you can see on the uh, opacity right here, this number, you probably don't didn't notice that earlier, but I'm pretty much like using the keyboard, pressing the number one to all the way to zero, right? On your keyboard, one, two, three, four, five. So it gives you like different percentage of the opacity. So like two is 20%, six is 60, zero is 100. If you want to do 5%, just press zero five or zero three, right? That give you that. So all this, giving me like a faster way to control the flow. Oh, so yeah. I can just do like that, and then you see like the difference on, on that, right? That is so helpful. I am going to add that to my flow. I didn't know about the opacity changes. Oh, yeah. You can also select the layer and press that number. It will just jump to the opacity on uh, the layer. So. That is so helpful. I don't know how many hours I've wasted taking <laughs> that little slider. Do you know yeah, the slider. <laughs> you opacity don't like slider. Tunnel, you know? so just like, that's why I, I switched to the tablet because I want to reduce the stress on yes. my arms. Probably every artist's nightmare, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so pressing B, and then I have a, a shortcut set on my pen, but I think it was a command shift and right click or something. So oh, it okay. changed the branches size. Oh, yes. Yeah. So if I move up and down, it changed the opacity. Left and right changed the size. You know? Yes. But I know you can use brackets also. Is that true? Yeah, bracket bracket works. So if it's I it's more clicking. Yeah, bracket. You can just hold on there. Yeah. Yeah. So just do that, and then the world of hotkeys. <laughs> Make your life easier. Yes. <laughs> um, pressing R, because like sometimes like I'm not really good at drawing like a straight line, so sometimes I just press R to rotate it. Oh yeah. And then just draw like a straight line is like sometimes easier for me. It depends on like you know, and then you can press C again just to like crop it, not actually crop it, but it will redirect that straight to oh, the original yeah. Kevin canvas. Oh yeah, rotate view guys is the yeah. R that checks out. Let's Sorry. see. This is Let's like the see. not so excited part, but it's pretty excited for me. <laughs> oh, Sorry. what? Oh, we have a question. Is that okay? Yes, of course. Um, Ask me anything. It says, what image size do you like to work with when you're choosing your stock images? So do you look for a specific one? Like a specific size, or do you just search all images? I think I search all images because most of it is pretty high resolution. Okay. So let's see if we jump to this, right? Um, most of it is like pretty big. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's very big. Yeah. 5,000 by 3,000. Yeah. So you can also, well, actually, if you, because if you use the actual license one, you can download like a preview, but the preview was like smaller size anyway. Yeah. But yes, yeah, so like most of the stock on here are really like high resolution. Um, there should be a little search bar somewhere. Filter or something. Yeah, here, let me just go back to Yeah, that. so um, if you didn't catch that, he is very open to using all different sizes because the resolutions are usually so high. Mm -hmm. um, so you can always adjust based yeah, on you that. Yeah, you see, oh, I just went on the Adobe stock, yeah. under the free category, type desert. There's a lot of amazing, beautiful photo that you can use. Um, and then on the left side, there's a filter, right? So I click image and then go on a uh, subcategory. You can pick photos and then uh, you can even, this is my favorite part, like the generate AI. Oh yeah. You can pick like, hey, you want AI or no AI at all. Oh, that's an excellent filter. I didn't know that. You can keep all 
options open, or you can exclude generative AI imagery. So if you want yeah, something, yeah, because like real. Uh, in a way, you can use Firefly to generate the landscape you want, right? So yeah. um, when I had a lot of credit. I accidentally licensed some Firefly or like other AI photo on there. I was like, oh wait, like I can make that, but yeah. <laughs> I need like super high detail, crisp yeah. like landscape. Like this one's so beautiful. Oh, know? that's so beautiful. Yeah, and then you can change like orientation too, and then um, all this like cool thing you can set on the left side. So we won't go too details on that. Yeah. But yeah. So most of the time, like let's just click a random one. Like the resolution is pretty high on here. Yeah. Um, so I'm not too worried about it. But I have worked on like other things too. Like sometimes like the um, I was trying to use sharpen. Like you can go to filter, sharpen. You can use sharpen or sharpen more, or you can create like a um, high pass and then use the overlay oh, layer yeah. on the top to sharpen thing. And then just as long as you use like smart objects, sometimes you can just like make it bigger yeah. without like make it too blurry. Right? Yeah. So that's a, a fun way to do it. Yeah. Okay. Good question. Thank you. Yeah. I hope that answered your question. Yes. So what I did just now is uh, I select that there. And then I pretty much, here, let me show you what I did. Because <laughs> I know we were, we were talking when that happened. I know, so, I'm okay. sorry. <laughs> I know, it's totally fine. Um, I forgot to explain. So now I have the part I wanted in red. So I got to make sure that I invert the layer mask by holding Command I or Control I. So now this part is the one, uh, the part I want, right? Command um, I and he inverted the layer yeah. mask. Cool. Okay, sorry. Let me... It's very satisfying to watch you do this. You're so fast and in a good way, like appropriate speed. But thank you. It's like watching uh, a painting go down right in front of our eyes. Okay, so this is the part where it gets tricky. So basically, I don't want to do like Control C and Control V because that would just be like a yeah. Um, I then have to turn this to convert to a smart object, so that's like extra work. Um, so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna drag this layer and then hover it over this plus sign on the bottom right. And then you let it go, so it duplicate the layer that you have already. Oh, awesome. But we want to make sure to delete the layer mask we had before, because it's duplicate the whole layer mask. Yeah. And then now we, our selection is still keep on the left side, right? That's awesome, and yeah. click mask, and then now you have the smart object with the new layer mask. And Look. then we have this front part. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> it's magic, I swear. Yeah. That's so, a good trick also, is dragging it over the plus sign. I also didn't. Yeah. Uh, what you can that. also do is hold command J or uh, oh, control J. J is just duplicate the whole layer. Yeah. Right? So um, that would be faster. But sometimes, I don't know why my brain's programmed just like, oh, yeah, I can just do that, you know. I think sometimes <laughs> you just, you start with a workflow and it kind of ingrains in your brain and then you just, you roll with it. You get yeah, I guess I can just do command J. It's the same thing. So I would just testing. I'll make sure the selection is still there. Okay, so now we did that, right? And then we have our moon. So we, this is called foreground copy, but I could just call it full foreground or just like, uh, front foreground, or I'm just gonna do FF because it's like, yeah, the, the front the is most, the, <laughs> the most frontest, <laughs> the frontest, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> so then we're gonna drag our moon behind it. So now you see it give that layers feeling of that, and then we can go in to make sure, like, clear out this little thing. Sorry, I'm just gotta make sure. I'm shrinking down the size, the brush size. There you go. Somebody just asked if you could repeat what your hotkey was for changing your brush size again, because um, he said he uses brackets. But what was the other one that you do? Let me try it. Um, um, uh, I'm pretty sure. Oh, Lewis yes. Comment. You said you have a shortcut with Should your pen. Right click? No way. <laughs> we'll figure it out. I used to know also. It's something. The... Oh, wait. Option. Oh, there you go. I think it's option, control, and then right click. Option, oh, control. Oh, no, sorry. Like... Option, control, options, and then left click while you hold on it and drag left and right. Okay, so and option. And then up and down also changes it too. You see the roundness? Oh, yeah. Oh, you the see hardness. see the hardness changes when you drag up and down, and then left and right goes to the di uh, diameter. Okay, awesome. Thank you for figuring control, that out. Control, option. So it should be control, alt, and then left click on PC. Okay. So try that. Yes, control option, left to right, control option, left click, yes. left, right changes the brush size, yes. and up, down changes the hardness. Yes. Cool. We got there. We so, got there. <laughs> um, if you have a tablet like me, um, I 
create the short key on the, the top key right here. So when I did the one click holding it, it does the uh, control options for me. Oh, yeah. So that's when uh, I can do that by dragging. I'm it sure that tablet. saves you so much time. Yeah, you yeah, probably yeah, do that all day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I had a program. Every time I got a new PC and stuff, I was like, oh, how do I do this again? Yeah. I go on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. the good, good questions because now I remember. I was like, oh, yeah, this is how you do it. So let Back me know if that roots. works. Yeah, that should work. Oh, um, option control shift. Somebody else answered it for us, too. Yay. Thank you, guys. Thank you for helping me. Okay, back to the moon. Back to the moon here. Um, so this is something I do, like, trying to find the center. Obviously, you can use uh, control R or command R to find, like, the ruler. Um, and then you can hold on it to drag the lines. But to make it faster, I just press C, use crop tool. Hit enter so I can just drag this directly to the center and then escape. Oh, yeah. So now I can tell that, okay, if my moon's in the center or not. I kind of want to do like run there. And then moving that away, maybe a little bit lower where the, where the moon is. A little more tucked away. Yeah, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Now you see there's a little little thing we can fix, right? So it's good too that we have the layer on. So all we have to do is just to fix that little layer in there. Clean okay. up the edgy edges. Let me save the file in case something happened. Yes. <laughs> Always save your Ugh. file. <laughs> Ugh, the panic of losing a file. I'm I so know. thankful that I work a lot in Illustrator, and I'm so thankful that if Illustrator crashes, it has an awesome recovery you know, program. Yeah, Photoshop I think they has all it. Do. Yeah, they'll yeah. do right now. And then um, you can also turn on the autosave on Photoshop. Oh, yeah, um, I should do that. Why haven't I done that? But. I just prefer like manual like pressing and just like, you know, I'm paranoid. I was like, I got to make sure I saved it. Like, yeah. how would I know? <laughs> You'll like save when, it anyway. So you it's like when you leave the house, you forgot, like, did I turn the stove on? Yeah. You know, just like crazy. Okay. We got to speed up a little bit here. Uh, what else do we have here? Okay. So now we have this. Obviously, I want to put a little person in front of it right there. And then I want to put like rocks on the left and right side. So give it like a depth of field, right? So... You are definitely achieving here. the depth that you were talking about. This does not lack depth at all. Uh, thank you. So I'm just going to click this real quick. Oh, awesome. He said he's, David said he's going to implement that into his workflow. So I pretty much just did go on here, quick select, and then get that rock because I just won the rock on the back. So now I have this, layer it, name it. So I'm going to drag it behind the moon. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Ta -da. And then we can resize this rock right here. I'm going to do like eh, maybe even bigger. All right. Why not? Bigger's better. Bigger. Uh, just to make sure it kind of looks good. Someone says you guys are basically talking to the boom, talking to the moon by Bruno Mars. <laughs> are we allowed to sing it? I don't know what's the what's the <laughs> copyright on the. Uh, I'm not a good singer, but I'm just saying like you know. Oh, the copyright. copyright. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, sing sing should be fine because that's like parody, right? So um, what I'm doing right now is also I use the quick select. So basically, because on the original photo, the background is like blue, um, so you can just use magic wand to one click to erase the the background. And then since mine still, you can still kind of see the edges. Oh, so yeah. I'm just selecting that again. Make sure I'm on the layer mask and then double check the area I'm selected. Switch to the black brush and then I can hide. Whoops. Uh, don't Select you hate the it. wrong layer, right? <laughs> layer mask. Layer mask. <laughs> layer mask. There you go. Then I can make sure it's more clear, right? So you can still kind of see like right here, but. Little, little things. Little easy bit, to fix. you know. I'm just going to boop and then doop, doop. <laughs> There you go, perfect. And then I'm gonna duplicate it by Control J, come in T, and then flip it, and then move it back here. But I don't want you to be able to tell that's the same rock. So what I'm gonna do is to make it oh wow even bigger. <laughs> so that's the same yeah, it's one. The same you just rock. copied it. Yeah. You can't tell though. It changes it a lot. I feel just like. You might figure out the way to hide it, you know? Yeah. So just like, okay, like. The distinctive. Yeah, the more I had, the less you can tell what is going on. So now your brain just automatically triggers that, like, oh, it's just like a wall behind yeah. the moon, you know? It's continued. We well, okay, do have another sorry. question for you. Yes. Have you found a faster way to correct level shadows and color balance? Level um, shadow, color balance. I guess maybe that's what you were talking about with adjustments. Like you tend to lean into adjustments to fix those issues. Okay, so I don't have a good example, but I can show you exactly how I do it. It's my personal way. So let's try, let's actually try on the right side of the rock, right? 
Um, ba -ba -ba -bun. So these are the two adjustment layer I like to use. So one is actually there's two to three, but let's start with hue saturation and then color balance right here. You see these two icon. Um, it also says right here, right? So you want to click that. So usually I like to kind of like desaturate it a little bit because like the um, the layer you're using has like different color tones and stuff, right? So I desaturate a little bit so I can add more color back into it by either pen it with the different layer, click onto it, or just quick color balance. There's mid-tone highlights and shadow. Yeah. So you can select all right here. So it's um, more intentional. So, yeah, so I can like kind of like make it warmer colors and you see like, okay, what do I need to do to make sure like these matches like the, the bottom layer, right? Or the front layer. So yeah. what you're doing with that, and then if you're happy with it, and then do like sit saturate because if it's saturated more maybe it looks better maybe not right this will yeah. change the, the highlights and shadow so these are like the first two i would do and then from there let me hide this too um from there right you can see this is something i was actually teaching a student about um if you sample the darkest part in the foreground it looks like that color let's see where that color, right? And then you can sample the darkest part of this, the object you want to blend in yeah. to see, right? They're actually pretty similar. Already, they are similar. Right? So like you want to kind of match those two colors, like the shadow and highlight as close as possible. And the faster way to do, which is like, I don't know if a lot of people use this or not. Um, so you click this icon right here, right? Create a new fill or adjustment layer. You click it <clears throat> and you go all the way to the bottom selective color so this is like kind of like my secret weapon or my favorite tool to use yeah um so you clip that and then <clears throat> what this could do is similar as the same way you use levels and every other thing else um you can do black neutral neutrals and whites these three change the shadow and then the um highlight so you can you see like it attack all the uh the oh, black wow, <clears throat> yeah. on there and then you can also add different tones directly to that but not affecting um, the other colors on there. Not colors, like the, the shadows and highlights, right? Oh my gosh, that's awesome. So you can do that, right? So obviously you can say, okay, this one is like more reddish, yellow, do that. And it was like, okay, something else doesn't look right. Then you can go on to the neutral. Neutral does, see, it leaves the, the, the shadows alone. Oh, yeah. So now you can control that to match that. And then doing that, you can also go to highlight. That's like a different thing. So highlight or neutral sometimes doesn't always show. That's the other thing. So you need like... Um, the layer, if it has like a really bright color on there, right? Yeah. Um, then you'll be able to see the difference on there. But usually doing the, the black and neutral effect the, um, is the sh same as mid-tone shadows and highlights. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Without having to use the dodge the and burn yeah. and all that too. <laughs> Without dodge and burns and levels. So the ideal best way is to use all of those to get you like the perfect way like you yeah. know, for you. Uh, my workflow, like these three are my favorite to use. Cause I can just change like slowly and then to like, sometimes I might overdo it, just have the same layers, but like on top of each <laughs> yeah. other. So when it gets yes, too crazy. Yeah, you add 15% and then another 15% yeah. and then. So yeah. I'll go back and like clean out the levels. It's like, okay, I turn this off. It's like, okay, I don't really need that layer right yeah. there, right? So yeah, so again, it's right here. Go down, selective color. That's my favorite tool to use. That's so helpful. Yeah, obviously you can throw on like a gradient map or like a color lookup just overall to cover that track. Yeah. Um, but selective color is my favorite tool. So try it, give it a shot. It's very similar as level. Um, it does Non-destructive. Thing. Yeah, it's non destructive. It's That's the same awesome. as using level, right? But if this thing scares you, um, the selected color won't scare you that yes. much. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah I hope so that helped answering you. Yeah, maybe give that a try and see if that helps with yeah. and your workflow. We're gonna, we gonna do something interesting. So, I'm gonna group the rocks and then, sorry, move, clip the adjustment layer to the group, which you can do that too. So I'm going to name this rock. Oops, that's not how you spell, spell rock. <laughs> eh, whatever, it's okay. We're not here to spell. We're here to design, right? <laughs> oh, okay. also, Ted, just so you know, we're about halfway. Okay, we're halfway. We got time, don't yes, worry. Yes, plenty of time. So this is where I start to paint light into my art, right? So I'm just going to turn everything dark because it's like in the in the background, the, the sky's light, right? So it's like think about like... If you take a photo of the stars, this is gonna be dark in the back, and then you kind of see foreground because the light source is our moon, right? Yeah. Um, so then I'm gonna paint this back on here. Okay, so to explain that, basically I turn it brightness all the way down and then go on to layer mask on it and then just hide the part, right? So it looks like there's a light coming out from, from the moon, right? And yeah. then the same thing, I can clip it and then do like, 
more and then so once Inverted. again using those adjustments and layer masks yeah just kind of like you can also go into like details of like oh there's like stronger highlights right by like creating a better contrast painting on the shadows yeah those darkness and stuff so it really looks like oh like the moon is right there glowing right so yeah. that's like a quick way to do it um you can also group this whole thing so you know like that's your super rocky layer super rocky, <laughs> super rocky I got you. um okay then we're gonna jump into the moon right how do you make a moon glow so there's obviously many different ways you can do it um one thing I, I like to do is creating a brush using 30 percent so if I use here I'm gonna show you so kind of create like a fake sun, fake glowing you can do this 30 percent and by by clicking Oh, sorry, by clicking and then shrinking it and click again, shake again, clean. So it looks like a glowing light. Oh, like that, right? yeah. Uh, I missed that dot right there. But here. I'll just it kind of concentrates that. it. Yeah, without it being... And then you can use screen. So that create like a glowing effect. And then you can kind of like, you know, make it bigger and then overlay on the moon. So that's one way to do it. The other way, just the classic easy way is double click on the layer and then do outer glow and inner glow. Right. So outer glow, want to make sure like, um, is adjusting you can see a little edging right there opacity and then size maybe make a little bit bigger and inner glow you want to do edge you can do center or edge actually probably center looks better in this case change the opacity and then size about there right so now it looks like the moon is glowing look at that and if it's too strong you can always go back because you want more control just to dim it and oh, to do yeah. that and then we can always create a new layer on the top of it is like the technique I showed earlier. You can do that, kind of like make the moon glow better. Make sure you do screen on blending mode, reduce that because that's like really bright. Yeah, a little in your face. <laughs> and then we're not done yet because, um, oh, I just realized something very interesting that I did. Uh, this should be the rock layer should be behind. Oh, yes, because yeah, I was like, something's missing, something yeah. doesn't look right. Okay. Oh my gosh, look how much depth that added to yes. just by doing that. And then jumping back to here, the foreground. Well, now it's mid ground, right? Okay, let me save it. So we want to dim that, make it dark too. And then f press D to go back to black and white and X to reverse it. And then using the brush on the layer max just to kind of bring that highlight back into there, right? Because oh. that's how it glows. Probably making it even darker. And then we can create another layer just of the mist. That's like kind of going here. Change that to screen, reduce that. So it kind of looks like it's glowing around there. Nothing too crazy. And then even with the foreground that's right here, then I can click that and then reduce that lighting, you know. So kind of like give you that like glowing effect. Oh uh, yeah, that made such a difference too. I guess it's it's funny how much like you have to think about this, you know, for real life, and how much you have to how it helps to kind of study real life mm -hmm. to make these things, you know, look good. Yeah, so it's almost almost like digital painting. Okay, so anyway, yeah. so we got. <laughs> I was like, oh, the time, the time is ticking. Uh, so we're gonna do this. Select subject. Um, press Q. We're just gonna like. Oops. Wait. Let me think about it. I think it has to be that. Cause like I'm working in reverse way, so yeah. instead of like plus sign, I'm using minus. Yeah. So I can do this. Hurt your then, head a little. Sometimes. I know. I was like, what am I doing again? <laughs> right. So then we're gonna dim that, and then kind of like put it behind the foreground, so the camel can looks bigger, uh, and behind the sand, and then obviously I'm just gonna do a quick circle in, and then there's a layer mask on there already, right? So I'm just gonna create a group, and then press it again. So now it's group layer mask and there's a layer mask on that. So then yeah. we can do what we mentioned earlier by kind of like desaturate it and then add it into like a highlight or maybe shadow to like more redness. And Look how kind like of a, ominous it is. It's not ominous, I guess. It's not like scary at all, but it's yeah, like, and then We want to clean that highlight. Well, what we can do is like we can leave that right there, but we might have to reduce it the satur uh, the saturation right because the moonlight is like more desaturated compared to like the desert light that we had earlier. Yeah. Um, so you want to make sure moving that. It's pretty gold, then. I guess. Yeah. So now like you got this. 
filling. Okay, so now we have a little bit of time. Now I'll show you what we can do, right? So obviously you want to save this file and then you go on to Adobe Express, right? So this is where the cool part is that you could just drag directly of your PSD file onto uh, Adobe Express. Your PSD file, for yeah. real. That's awesome. So you can just directly drag your PSD file to Adobe Express and then you can add it. So obviously I did it already, so I don't want to waste your time to watch the uploading screen. Um, so, uh, oh yeah. The other thing is I want to show you real quick, like text to image generator fill, you can also use it on uh, Adobe Express. Yeah. Right, so it not, doesn't only have to be a Firefly, you can do this on here. Uh, but let's go to our file. <laughs> right, okay. So this, this is the part I was like, oh, I already added this, so you can kind of see like what is going on here. But actually, I want to see, mm -mm -mm. can I duplicate this? I'm pretty sure you can duplicate. Oh, duplicate it. the file? Yeah, yes, duplicate definitely. Uh, before. I don't know why I named before, but it's like naming it. Abracadabra, duplicating. <laughs> oh, that is so fast. Wow. It was so fast. I realized that yesterday when I was in Adobe Express. Add a timeline. It's very efficient. So you go to add a timeline, and you want to go to short layer timing. Uh, I'm just going to drag it all the way to the bottom. So this is like the final um, image and video, right? So what you want to do is to think about like how you want this animation to look like. So I don't know if there's a quick way I can delete all the animation. Oops, probably not, but I guess we can just play directly yes. like, to see what it looks like. So this is like the part I designed. So the sand is coming in. <gasps> look. And then the, the rock is rising. So you have kind of two contrasting yeah. motions. So things like, so um, pretty much, oh, look at I didn't really do too much of animation. All I did is importing all the layers into Adobe Express. And then from there, you click the layer you want to animate it. And then you go on to uh, animation right here. So if I just delete this, and I can choose all different type of animation to make it work, right? So we can, we can change the ground to the right. And then... So I, just to clarify, <coughs> yeah. you selected the layer on the right yes. and then animation on the left and yes. then adjusted it. Awesome. Yeah, so you can you can try all this animation template and then to imagine like how you want things to move the way you want it. <clears throat> and then you can change the duration of how fast the animation will move, right? And then the directions where it's coming from. And by make sure you're on the timeline, editing timeline, show all the layer timing. And you can dragging it by decide when do you want this layer to come in, right? So if I move it to the back, that means like the front layer won't come in till like all other animation come, right? So that's the back layer. So like you see, this is where the front layer come in, right? Yes. So you can customize every single layer oh, that's and see awesome. which timeline you want the best. <clears throat> I probably should show you like start from beginning, um, or at least but, you know yeah. one in action. So if I drag, uh, I'm obsessed with the moon bounce. Oh yeah, that you made so happen. the moon bounce, I I just found it in the animation right here. So I'm just gonna delete it, right? So if I use drift in, where is it? Oh, sorry, because it's not happening till here. So if I just click in, and then there's like different animation, because moon rising is also really cool, right? That's yeah, where the that moon makes sense. From or shrink, but then when I saw the spin, and then like tumble, I was like, what? Like, I gotta use this. You have so, to. <laughs> all you have to do is select the layer that you want to animate it, and then go on the left side animation and click it, and then you can adjust how fast and how slow it goes. Oh, yeah, Yeah, awesome. duration, the fastest, the shorter time, the fastest the animation go, the longer time, the, it takes longer to do that, right? So you do that, and then you can also change the rotation and then that just make it fast, right? To just like, oh, that, I was like, this is so cool. It's I, so I playful. Got to have it. Yeah. Yeah. So, in my head, I was just like, okay, the foreground is gonna come in, and then the rocks gonna rise up on the back, and then from there the sky comes down, and then uh. the moon bounce back in. Right. Yeah. So I was like, this is how so I want exciting. it. And then at the very end, you do that, right? So from here, this is where it comes a little tricky. Like when you, I I saw the ASMR, I was like, okay, I kind of have a little background of editing video and audio. Oh, yeah. So I was like, okay, I want to be able to bring this with ASMR. So when I first start to animate it, I have to also imagine how it was sounds like and what the timing looks like as an yeah. animation, right? Because you have to think about the sand coming, it's like the sound dragging, like shh, 
right? And then yeah. you have the the rock coming out, it's like yeah, like rumbling, yeah. and then you have the sky. What is the sky what coming the down? Sound? Sounds yeah, like yeah. What does that sound like? <laughs> right, yeah, like and a then, curtain. Every time on um, my when I'm adding it is when the new environment comes in that there should be a sound that comes with this so yes. windy in the desert uh, a summer sun for the for the night come down yeah. and the moon dropping and bouncing in the desert so I'm gonna show you guys the final uh, video that I made for this which is doo -doo -doo. and this is kind of perfect we have five minutes left yeah so it's like so, wrapping wrapping it all up in this nice pretty yeah. package. Let me know if you can hear the music. So it come in. Yeah, let us know if you guys can hear it. Okay. Oh, I wish you can hear it. You can't hear it. <laughs> no! <laughs> well, you can find these on your Instagram, right? Oh, I haven't posted this one yet. So, yeah, but the you can find ones? the others on my Instagram. Yes. So kind of zooming from there. Look. Uh, thumbs up or type if you can hear the music because I want to make sure it was a very fun experiment to design this, right? So it's like... Um, added this in Premiere, find the sound library and effects, just add it on there and combine it. Yeah. Um, you can also add sounds on Adobe Express, but just like for, for right now, just like soundtrack only. So this is really fun to make. And from here, this is where it goes to like schedule, right? Um, if you go to Adobe Express on the left side, there is, where is the schedule? Let me go back to the main page, schedule right here. So you could connect your social media to Adobe Express, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, Instagrams and everything. And this is a here, game changer. I know. Like being able to me, just upload it. I can't wake up 6 a.m. every day and just post it. It's no. tired. But no. I could schedule it to post yes. for me every day by 6 a.m. so all my audience around the world can see this. Absolutely. So what you have to do is just create, click the day you want to upload your content and then select the channel you want to do. So you got Twitter, even LinkedIn. That's really cool. And Pinterest. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't know you can do Pinterest. That's cool. I didn't so know you could do the LinkedIn. There you go. Yeah. And then you can do post, reel, a story, and then you can just drop the file onto here. Type a caption, just like, check out my Adobe Live video. And then <laughs> hashtag and stuff. And then you can preview, schedule, publish now, pick the day you want, and then, you know, just make it work. So this is really cool. And it's very simple. All you have to do is just to drag the file onto it, right? So it's gonna like upload and do everything. So I'm not gonna upload right now because I don't know when I wanna post <laughs> yeah. this yet. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this quick ASMR, you know, fun editing Absolutely. with me and animated in Adobe Express, you know. So wait, can people hear the sound? Did it? Did I hear the sound? I don't know. Can you guys? Nobody. They do. Oh, okay, you cool. guys came yeah, here. Can hear. Awesome. Yeah, I just keep playing on the back because I thought it was like really cute. So yeah, um, let me know if you guys have any questions and try out your own ASMR editing. I Absolutely. think it's very interesting because like. Um, I always struggle trying to figure out like, how do I show my audience how simple my editing is and yeah. encourage them to try it. Yeah. But also, like, what can I do, right? So doing this kind of like an uh, interesting way to break down how the layer works and oh, the yeah. stats or the hidden thing. And then now add a little animation that I don't even have to do, you know, like yeah. my own. Yeah. So I also, think, yeah. yeah, definitely try like the schedule. This is like a great tool. Oh, yeah. For, yeah. I think it's awesome how like accessible <coughs> Adobe Express has made some of these things. Like I know I saw your um, you know video that you posted on your Instagram of the ASMRs, and I was like, oh my gosh, like that just felt so beyond me, you know. Oh, thank and you. And so yeah. it's cool, uh, which it is cool, and it is you know you put a lot of hard work into it, but it's very cool being able to see how you know anybody can do this with Adobe Express and using these tools. And so, yeah, um, I do want to quickly mention, yeah. you get to see both of us again later today. Oh, yes. Um, we're going to, yeah, we get to be together again today. I'll be hosting you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. um, we have more live streams for you next. We have Manifesting Your Dreams with Art Alchemy with Amina again and Emma. And then later today, you have both of us to talk about iconography. So make sure that you stick around. Um, yeah. Ted, this is so exciting. Yay. Where does everybody find you? What's oh, yeah. the best way to find uh, you? Oh, you can find me on every social media. Just go by Ted's Little Dream. I know it sounds a little funny, but I love yeah, it. it's my project. So on um, <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Instagram is my main platform. I upload uh, yeah. every day on stories. So check it out and follow me. And feel free to DM me if you have any questions. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. Again, if you have any last minute questions, you can either send those now or send them in the later chats today. And we will see you guys soon. Thank you, Ted. Yay. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, you guys. Bye.
Hello and welcome back to Adobe Live. My name is Emma Gustafson and I'm back with Amina El Kabani. She is a multimedia artist, a photographer and creative director, and she self-identifies as an art alchemist. Amina, your first session was so fun. I loved watching it and I know all of you loved watching it as well. So I'm super excited to see what we're gonna be creating now. Thank you so much. Yes, I'm so excited to be too. back. That was so much fun earlier. We got into using AI tools, Firefly, to generate some visual assets for a pre-production deck, um, discussing what it's like to visualize what you're bringing to life before it happens. And that is something we're riffing on in this session as well. So fun. Um, this session is a little bit more manifestation focused. It's more... Uh, visualization focused, and we're going to be building a vision board for our year together. Woohoo! Yes, yes. So exciting. I love vision boarding. Me too. So it's, fun. It's such an important tool to, you know, set the tone for your year. And what's so cool is that it's actually the astrological new year today. Really? This week, yes. No way. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. It's crazy. We're now in Pisces season. So okay. Pisces out there, drop it in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, actually, it's the beginning of the end. So it's the end and the beginning is coming soon. But it's also the last full moon of the astrological year. So this okay. is a great time to be setting intentions, setting yourself up for success yeah, for sure. with what you want the next 365 days or so to look like, feel like. And especially just like, yeah, all of the descriptors, we're gonna get into it. So yeah. I've set us up with two mood boards, two vision boards, one for the collective, because I like to dream collectively as well as individually. And we've also got one here for personal. So we're gonna separate our personal goals from our collective goals. And hopefully they also complement each other. Yeah, totally. I love it. We're gonna dream big today, make some fun vision boards. I'm so excited. Exactly. So we're jumping into Firefly first. That's right. So awesome. we're gonna jump right into Firefly. And just so you are aware, this is some of my digital collage work. So pretty. I mean, look at that. I was totally insta stalking and looking at your website today. So gorgeous. So I'm so excited to see what we can accomplish in this hour. Thank you. Yeah, of This course. is also some images from my travels. We're going to be pulling from some inspiration from my own photography here. And also we're going to be going through some of Dobie's amazing stock imagery because that's something valuable that we need to all be Absolutely. paying attention to. So let's jump into Firefly. We're going to go to firefly.adobe.com. And this oh, is from our last from session. From your earlier session, I was watching that. Yes. Loved it. <laughs> it was so much fun. But if you haven't been on Firefly before, it's got a lot of really incredible um, prompts as well as examples of prompts. And the key here is really getting as descriptive as possible. Totally. So yeah, if you haven't browsed through it already, definitely do so. Check out some prompts that people have used in the past to inspire some of the prompts that we're going to do today. So something like this, I love this and I love visual it's communication so because it's something that really allows you to, you know, figure out the who, what, when, where, why, and how of it all, you know? Totally. And I really like to think about whenever I'm manifesting or even just planning something for a photo shoot like we were doing earlier, it's really important for me to focus on the feeling and colors really do that for me. Like I'm looking at this and I'm like, wow, this feels so abundant. This feels like joyful. This feels like celebratory in a way. And the prompt here was iridescent organic shapes with soft movement. So it's fascinating how something like that can translate into these feelings of something joyful, celebratory, etc. So let's see. Um, I would love for all of you in the chat to follow along with me if you're open to it, whether you yes. have a notepad open or a Photoshop file. I would, if I were you, I would be taking notes about what kind of year <laughs> you want to have so we can create this together. And while I'm creating one for myself and the collective, you can also create your own vision board as we go. 
And so, really quick, when you're saying collective, you mean kind of the community at large, right? So all of us here, live and online, exactly. it's for all of us, and then personal goals too. Exactly. Awesome, super yes. fun. We're bringing everyone in on the fun, so that's really exciting. Exactly. And so some things that I want to focus on feeling this year are abundant, joyful, well-nourished, you know, what else? I want to be active. I want to be physically active. I want to be creatively active. I want to travel. I want to teach more workshops. I want to invite more people into my physical community in my physical studio in downtown LA. So cute, by the way. <laughs> I want to go to LA just to see your studio. Please the pictures are gorgeous. Yes. yes. So let's think about collectively what we want to create. Something that's been on my mind, and it's so cool that Whimsical Steampunk is I know, that up. was so fun. I love looking at the example prompts because sometimes I just get a little stuck with what to write. Exactly. And there's some really creative things. So, yeah, yes. that's kind of helpful seeing what they're coming up with up there. It's so cool because what I was actually going to start typing is not steampunk but solar punk. I really Whoa. want to see... A solar punk, oh, all caps. All caps, solar punk. Solar (laughs) punk, you know, but a solar punk rooftop garden in San Francisco. That's where we are. So fun. This is something that I've had in my mind's eye for so long is envisioning all of the rooftops in San Francisco and L.A. just filled to the brim with, oh, wow, this looks so good. (laughs) This honestly kind of looks like the rooftop of this building. That's what I'm saying. So very accurate. Oh my gosh. When I was living here in San Francisco, I spent so much time just like looking and exploring the rooftops in downtown SF and just like finding myself imagining a world where the rooftops weren't actually like just left empty. I feel like there's so much underutilized space yeah on rooftops that could could be used for like regenerative farming and creating crops for community imagine if we all had the opportunity to not only create these kinds of rooftop gardens but steward them harvest from them and you know host some community programming imagine an art show or a poetry show or a live musical performance on a rooftop garden like this that was already giving back to the community so do you have a green <sighs> thumb? I do. I love to water my plants. Oh, man. Yes. I have <laughs> fake plants. I hate to admit it, but maybe this will change my mind. <laughs> I love it. I hope that, you know, everybody, you don't have to overthink it either when it comes to your, um, you know, tending to a plant. I think that if you just start with one. Start small. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. This will inspire me. Maybe I'll see some plants that I want to pick up exactly. after this. Yes. And so what I just did, I actually changed the aspect ratio to three by four because I love to format my work for social media just because that's primarily where my work ends up. So this is great because now not only is it specific to the rooftop garden, but we also see the Golden Gate Bridge or Bay Bridge. I can't tell which bridge that is. And we see like the Transatlantic building back there. A palm so, tree. So fun. I so love how fun. it added that when you um, expanded the aspect ratio. Yes. We're loving this. We're yes. loving this so much. I love um, how it spotlit everything. I love that it included, because I said solar punk, it included some um, solar panels. So this is an introduction to a world that I would personally feel more proud to exist within, a world where this exists. Let's take it a few steps further because I see that we are missing some key factors here, which is like, I want this to be like a fruit and vegetable garden. Okay. Because I didn't specify, let's add those descriptors back in. Love to see how that turns out. So let's see, fruits and And Carol said that Firefly does great with steampunk, which was that example we saw on the homepage. So that's fun. Maybe that's something else to play with in your own time. We definitely But solar punk is something I've never heard of personally. So, I mean, you are opening my eyes to new things today. Oh, look at that. Okay, that's fun. We're starting to see some fruits and vegetables in there. I love it. And some pretty plants and flowers. I love that. 
I'm going to just add the word expansive in there because it's one of my favorite words. That's a good word. A good descriptor. Let's see if that changes it. And as I'm adding and subtracting words, I'm just clicking generate over yep. and over again to see what comes. And it's pretty fast, too. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't have to wait around forever for it to come up with something new. It's really great for quick, iterative processes. That was literally within seconds. Yeah. Ugh. So let's change. I love this one here. I'm going to just favorite that in case I want to go back to it. But now I want to see if I can actually change the perspective to bird's eye view. So let's see. Bird's eye view of an expansive solar punk rooftop fruit and vegetable garden in San Francisco. Hmm. Overlooking more rooftop gardens in the background and look at how descriptive that is that's going to help just generate an even better image i'm so so curious and david is totally on board with um our solar punk he said solar punk is the way so we agree with you david exactly (laughs) this came out exactly the way i wanted it to which is actually crazy those are gorgeous Ah, this one on the right I think is my favorite just because it looks so juicy, so abundant. There's all these different fruits and vegetables and it was intelligent enough to like give us a variety. So we see, I think those are like some tomatoes in there. Yeah. You know, maybe some lettuce. Um, I can say, ah, this is crazy. (laughs) Um, So I'm going to favorite that one. And because I like this one on the right a lot, I'm just going to go ahead and generate some similar ones. It's going to take the information from this one and create some similar. While that's generating, let's check out this amazing panel on the right. So many fun options. I love playing around with this, especially if I want it some sort of like artistic style. Exactly. It's so easy. It's things that I couldn't necessarily think of off the top of my head, but it's all right there for you. So you can just play with all the different options. Oh, golden hour. Who doesn't love Golden Hour? It's my favorite, <laughs> admittedly. Especially as a photographer, I'm yeah. sure that's the best. Back in my day, I <laughs> back in my day. <laughs> <I've>, <laughs> You're not old. <laughs> I know I look young, but I've been a photographer for the past 10 years and freelance for eight. Wow. So I used to only shoot during Golden Hour and Blue Hour because okay. I loved to utilize golden hour through the sunset into blue hour to create different like light environments um so that's a pro tip if you're outside you know utilizing natural light as a photographer but it's also something you can implement in firefly which is so (laughs) easy you don't have to wait all day for golden hour you can just click a button and do it here yeah those are looking so good this is loving this This is actually insane, and we're just going to go ahead and, even though all of these are incredible and exactly what I had in my mind's eye, let's just go ahead and download this. Perfect. And just so everyone knows, this is going to implement some credentials into the metadata that say that AI was used in the generation of this image so that, you know, we can keep it transparent. We're going to promote transparency. Love it. Content credentials. Yes. So just so you are aware, that's that. We have downloaded the image. And let's go ahead and just generate a few more here. So I'm going to just clear all of this. I'm going to just delete it. And let's see. One thing we want to see in a world that we can be more proud to exist in is, yes, a solar punk garden. What else? I think... More community parks would be nice. I think we need Uh more third spaces. Okay, I like it. Maybe like a town square with public seating, with comfortable public seating. Yeah, not a hard wooden bench. Exactly. Those are nice if you're in a pinch, but I would like some comfy chairs. I would love to see more seating in big metropolitan cities. I love how Europe has so many third spaces, so many town squares. So let's see here. And notice how there is also suggestions coming up here. But, hmm, decorated tables and chairs. You know what? I actually do think that that's a good That could be fun. Kind of a beautification aspect of this vision board. I like it. Now let's meditate on what kinds of seating we want to see. Do we want to see, like 
some um, beanbag kind of chairs. Ooh, do we want to like see that. some French bistro seating? Chat, do you have any ideas for how we should be seated? And David and Carol, I love that you all have green thumbs or are aspiring <laughs> to have green thumbs. Maybe like me, maybe um, this is my time to start. <laughs> I love these prompts that are changing as I am clicking totally. the recommendations. Um, I just added the descriptors of at evening light and city Gorgeous. lifestyle. How about, let's see, a Moroccan kind of inspired oh. situation. Let's see what that's what that brings up and we'll we'll edit from there. So, so far we've got our solar punk rooftop gardens. Now we're creating a town square with comfortable public seating Whoa. and decorated tables and chairs. Okay. This is gorgeous. This feels like a fancy restaurant that I want to go to. Yeah, seriously. And I love that it took my notes of the Moroccan inspiration. Yeah, it's absolutely. also, it's kind of giving like Spanish style as well, which is lovely. Mm -hmm. I really like this one on the right. And I think that. Yeah, let's let's favorite that. I also want to create more big picture visions, but I'm gonna also download this because it actually is a really good image to use. So we're gonna download that. that. And now we're going to actually adjust our prompt to create a more big picture, bird's eye view perspective, similarly to how we adjusted the first prompt. So let's say, once again, bird's eye view of a town square with comfortable public seating and decorated tables and chairs at evening light, city lifestyle, Moroccan inspired, let's say. I mean, we can just keep going with these prompts. I could write paragraphs and paragraphs. <laughs> you literally can write paragraphs and paragraphs. That's awesome. Yes, this is so much fun. Yeah. I'm excited to see how these look when they all come together in your vision board. That's gonna Me be really too. exciting. Oh, look at that. We got some more blues. I love that. The bird's eye view is really going well. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I don't think I've ever tried that in Firefly. Yes. That is a big tip. Something I learned when I was first studying photography when I was literally in yearbook class in high school. Yes. I We were talking about that. Or you <laughs> and Maggie were talking about yearbook. Yeah. It's literally like the foundation of my whole career. So yes, shout out that same. class. Everyone loves a good yearbook class. Yes. And lots of people in the chat were big fans of your book too. Exactly. But one thing I learned was actually perspectives for photography. Sure, so yeah. there's bird's eye view, there's worm's eye view if you want to actually look up. There is rule of thirds, you know, so if you want to put your subject in the rule of thirds, you can also include that in the perspectives. And what's great is also on this sidebar there's composition options so, so you can easy. actually create. you don't have to remember all of those different angles ahead of time exactly because i wouldn't know macro photography that's yes. kind of a big word <laughs> yeah there's so many different awesome. options here yeah i and really like the close-up ones mm -hmm, mm -hmm. exactly it's so much fun to just play around with this i'm curious what to see, to see what the wide angle version Let's would look do like it. Let's see here. So as we're generating this, I'm thinking of how else I would want to switch this up, right? Ugh. Whoa. This is exactly what I saw in my mind's eye. That's crazy. Yeah, I think it definitely captured the evening light even better with some of those glows of the light and the dark sky. Right. I love this. And I love this first one and second one. I think I'm going to go with the first one. and. Cool favorite it let's generate some that are similar here and see what happens and then I will export it so we can move on do we have any questions chat yeah fire away with these questions or if you're just a firefly fan let us know we'd love to see and hear about all the things that you all have created in firefly so I I'm love just playing around with it honestly even if there's no point it's fun just to see what you can create. It's to get your creative juices flowing. Yeah, absolutely. And so while we're talking about creative juices flowing, you know, this is really just a great tool to get yourself creatively curious once more and invite yourself into a process of art alchemy, which is my big creative philosophy. I would love to tell y'all about it. Yes, let's hear about it. 
All right. So Art Alchemy, while I export this image, Art Alchemy is actually the act of using art making for personal transformation and liberation. The same way that we're generating some images here that match what we see in our head for our future self and, and the future of our collective, Art Alchemy is a way to do that and a way to literally just free your mind, get creative, stay curious, and awesome. transform the vision you have in your mind into something tangible. Now I can actually export these and now I can drag them into Photoshop. Woohoo! Photoshop yes. time! And build, start building this, um, this little mood board of ours. So fun. Did you ever get into like decoupage? or like cutting up pieces of magazines and Absolutely. pasting them onto things. Yeah, I had a big mood board phase, but physically when I was younger. So this is kind of the, the grown up that. version of that. I love that so much. <laughs> yes, let's go ahead. And so while I'm going to, whoops, while I dragged this in, I'm going to click Yes, and I'm going to also make sure that I convert this into a smart object so that I preserve Perfect. the size. And um, Robert, to answer your question, I'm not sure what our most common prompt is in Firefly. There's so many, and there's so many different options, but I would recommend looking on um, some of the other pages on Firefly where they show examples and you can see some different type of content um, that people have created. Exactly. Yeah. So what that is I, a good question. I would love to know too. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, what I just did, I converted the image into a smart object Perfect. and then I went into um, edit and I went into transform that allows you to continue to scale the image and change the size. So that's what I'm doing here. And you'll um, have to hold down shift, which I personally always mess up for exactly. resizing my illustrator habits. And then we're going to pull in our solar punk garden here. Again, love it. Clicking the check mark, converting into a smart object. Look at how awesome these pictures look next to each other. All created from super different prompts. It's exciting, and I feel like, yeah, the bird's eye view really ties it all together. I'm actually obsessed because one of my biggest goals as an artist is to bridge the gap between the creative community and, like, city builder, city planning teams and whatnot. I think it's cool. so important for creatives to collaborate with, um, with city planners and city councils. I think that artists have, you know, the minds and the perspectives to really change the future. Absolutely. And I would love to see a more integrated society that consults artists more of with their visions because visual communication is the number one way to push the needle forward. And using tools like this just helps it become that much easier to express your ideas and visions in a tangible way that can be really understood by all, right? Absolutely. Okay, so we've got a couple different things going on here. I'm just resizing them because I am a bit uh, detail oriented when it comes to these kinds <laughs> of too, things. Me too, me too. It's got to so... be very particular and meticulous about the spacing and the sizing. Exactly. It doesn't have to be perfect now for no, this. No, we're just vision boarding. Exactly. You don't have to be so precious with it. Yes. It's okay, this is for you. Exactly. Okay, cool. So let's leave those there for now. Gorgeous. And then let's jump back into Firefly to start to create some new prompts. Let's see, I've got my little trusty little notebook I here love on it. the side. All the ideas flow in. Yes. And if you all in the chat have any ideas for us too of what you would like to see for our personal and our collective vision boards, please let us know. I'm sure you all are creative. I know some people have some ideas about solar punk now, so. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> or you could be trying this at home too to generate some of your own images alongside of us. I feel like the next step in my mind's eye is to generate some photos of some like beautiful, abundant food. I think okay. that food is like the number one way to 
lead an abundant life. I don't think it has to be expensive to eat well. And I think that it has honestly improved my quality of life so much to eat better or more intentionally. But a big blockage for me growing up was actually that the food didn't look pretty. I'm very aesthetic. Yeah, you know, that's a big thing, especially Mm -hmm. for little kids picky eaters if it doesn't look appetizing you don't want to eat it so right I'm confident we can make some pretty and delicious looking food here yeah so it's like let's get more creative what kind of meals are we eating in this town square with our community are we eating like a big dinner I think I want to start with like fruit because I like to start my day with fruit that's smart I saw you eating fruit um earlier when we met and Amina's got some fruit on the side. I so. sure do. I'm looking at it. I'm like, ooh. Is that inspiring you? You can probably make it a little bit prettier it than some cut-up fruit salad. And so as we see here, I typed in fruit bowl. I have some prompt suggestions that Firefly is providing I me with. It. I honestly love that. I'm like, which which one do I want to go with? At white background. Papaya is kind of fun. Robert said smorgasbord. That's tough to say on camera, Robert. You're putting me on the spot. (laughs) I love that. I would be interested to see if Firefly could understand what that is. Right. A smorgasbord. I like that. That's a tongue twister. Thank you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. This is kind of coming out nicely. How about... I love this, but I want the pineapple to be cut as well. Yeah. And I feel like we could get it a little bit prettier. But this is pretty good for some, like, just basic photography things. I totally agree. I don't know. I don't have the skills that you do, so I personally love Firefly just to create easy little compositions like this where I don't necessarily have the tools or the skill set (laughs) to set up a whole, like, photo studio. So this is pretty cool. That's exactly right. This is so, like, inviting. This tool is literally a web browser app that we're able to access just with the internet and anyone can use this. Anyone can use their words, their descriptors to make an image like this. What's crazy is I've literally done photo shoots of bowls of fruit Uh exactly like this and I'm just like, oh, this is quicker. (laughs) Mind blown that I didn't have to like get my 70 to 200 lens out to get the right angle and all of the details of the cut fruit. This is actually really good quality like yeah I yeah. love it one of my favorite projects I think it was 2022 actually the end of 2022 I collaborated on an ebook that was a cookbook and oh, um, so fun story with my friend Iman Benet it's called cool. Alive Again the Gift of Eating Well if you're curious about I it I love it and that fits so well into the theme that we're talking about today exactly. so kind of perfect and, I'm just and like, Dave you can use these photos um anywhere you want royalty free yes I believe so that's right it's commercial yes accessible accessible to be used commercially which is so cool because if I wanted to run an ad about my specific recipe of the perfect breakfast fruit bowl, I could do that. I could use these images. I could run ads all across social. I could print them out as pamphlets. You name it. You can use these for all of that. Yeah, and the good thing is with those content credentials applied, um, people will know it's generated with AI, so you don't have to feel nervous about misleading anyone. So this is a really great tool. Exactly. I think it's also good to just always disclose that too, because that info is in the metadata. So if you are sharing on social, make sure you're not misleading people. Let them know, hey, I made this with Firefly AI. Yes. And say it proud, because this is honestly the future of visual media. And it's important to familiarize yourself with text to image prompting, because it's going to make your workflow so much faster. It's going to be so much more accessible in the future. It's already so accessible. I can't even imagine the ways it's going to become more accessible. Definitely. So, what picture are we picking here? Oof, they all look delicious. So I tough. think these are even better than the first generation. No, it really is. I think I already saved it, but I'm going to go ahead and download this one once again Great. because I really like it. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. It's like um, kind of an acai bowl, yogurt bowl, fruit bowl. I would call it like a parfait. A parfait. You That's know? the word I was looking for. Yep. <laughs> and I'm so funny as if you could tell this is dairy-free yogurt because there's no way Stop to tell it. that That's I wrote so that. That's so funny. Dairy-free. 
I love it. You know, we're we're keeping it we're keeping it close. Keeping so it abundant. See. Keeping right? it abundant. Mm-hmm. Yep. Plant love based. It. Plant based. So honestly, pretty good. Uh, yeah. I don't mind it. I'm obsessed. I love coconut yogurt. Okay, you know, nice. um, they also have a really good like oat milk based one. Love it. Love it. So and let's recap here. So far we've got a solar punk garden. We've got oh gosh, what else? A the town city square. with the chairs. Yes. A town square that's like represents a third space for our society to have more communal time. We've also got a healthy and abundant meal to start off our day. Love it. Um, next thing I want to focus on, I wrote different areas, which if you are comfortable writing yourself some notes, I would love for you to write what you want to see more of in your life this year, whether that's, you know, more physical health, more, um, connectivity in your relationships, you know, more connectivity in your friendships, like healthy communication, travel. Yeah. You said travel. I know that's yeah. something... I want to do this is my first year living in California so even traveling within the same state or wherever you live yeah that's kind of my goal this year what are some places that you want to go I want to see some gorgeous like ocean views I haven't ever really lived this close to the ocean before so I don't know I just love seeing the water I lived in a landlocked state my whole life so this is exciting and I feel like this is the year to explore nature and beauty okay I'm gonna riff off of that yes okay lush green cliff yes exactly what I had in my mind I love it overlooking the ocean I kind of want to describe one of my favorite places in San Francisco have you ever been to Land's End? Yes, gorgeous. Look at pictures online, great hikes. And definitely has what you're talking about, like the green cliffs um, and the ocean, which I love. Robert wants a lot of food for this year and the future, which Robert, I agree, love some food. Mm-hmm, absolutely. Let's see, a lush green cliff overlooking the ocean next to the woods. Wow, gorgeous. This looks like Big Sur, which is also nearby here. In California, yeah. Uh, it's one of my favorite places. Um, so pretty. Chat, if you have any gorgeous places nearby, let us know. If you live near the ocean, if you live near a farm, near a city. It's kind of fun to hear where everyone's from. Yes. I wonder, I don't see a morning light option here, so I wonder if it will work in the prompt. So yeah, let's, let's see. give it a shot. Let's see. A lush green cliff overlooking the ocean next to the woods at dawn. Oh. Nice. I wonder if, I, I always mix up dawn and dusk. <laughs> yeah, I was actually just thinking that. <laughs> I'm probably not awake for, oh. Well, that looks like morning. This does look like we'll morning. We'll say we light. got it right. It's like, <laughs> you know, another way to say that would probably be sunrise. Yeah, there you go. Sunrise. I do love a good sunset. Yeah, same. That's, I mean, don't we all? I always take out my phone and take a picture anytime I see a pretty sunset. Same. I it's, love it. It's the best. Those are gorgeous. I love the way the sun is reflecting on the water in these. So pretty. Let's see... The difference between the generation of the sunrise and the sunset. Sunset. I'm such a sunset fan. A pink sunset. Yeah. Pink is my favorite. I love pink. Yes. Okay. Those are pretty similar. You know, I feel like because I had it on golden, golden hour, hour, it was generating golden hour. That could be it. For sure. Situations. But let's see if removing that changes the prompt, prompted images Drum roll. much more. Okay, sunset. I want to see, like, colors. Yeah. Can we get some pink in the sunset? Uh, sunset with purple, pink, oh, and perfect. blue in the <laughs> sky. And almost maybe after sunset. Okay, so, I like that. I'm so curious. This is so much fun. It is so fun. A lot of times I also like to play with that color and tone feature um, just to get kind of more specific with, whoa, okay, cool. It understood exactly what I meant. Yeah. That's crazy. That's gorgeous. But yeah, let's play with this color and tone 
module here. Let's see. Like vibrant gets it super punchy in the colors. I do love the pastel feature. I use that a lot. I like the like, more <laughs> soft, whimsical kind of muted colors. Me too. And I love that you can really like start with a prompt and adjust as needed. Totally. Like this is so much more in alignment with what I was going for. Yeah, it feels a little bit more realistic in a way too. Mm -hmm. Now, if you wanna take it a few steps further, and this is something I really was excited to touch on too, because as a photographer, I was actually self-taught. Like I spent time tinkering with the aperture and the shutter speed for years. And if you are an up and coming photographer and you want to learn photography without having to tinker with all of the things in your camera, although I still recommend that, <laughs> this is another tool to do that. You can actually tinker with the aperture in this app so that you can see the difference between aperture, shutter speed. That's such a good idea. I've never thought about that. I have a good camera that you'll not like to hear this, but I <laughs> shoot in auto because <laughs> I don't know how to use all these features. So that's really smart. Yeah. Easy to play with that without, yeah, like you said, having to get your camera out so you can understand the concept before you actually take out your camera. Exactly. Love that idea. And so imagine, you know, you narrow this settings down in Firefly and then you actually go out into the world to try and recreate that image. Yeah you know, maybe that's going to be another one of my workshops soon in the near future. That would be super cool to try to fun. recreate what you came up with in Firefly. Exactly. There's another little prompt idea for you. Yeah. Creative activity. I like it. So let's note the changes that were produced based on changing the aperture from where it was. I think it was over here, like F8, which keeps it nice and flat. It allows the fullness of the image to come true through. But when I change it to the f-stop of 1.4, it actually focuses on the foreground so much more and gives a lot more depth of field. As you can see, mm -hmm. the foreground is really, really rich and everything else in the background is a bit softer. It looks like it's more further away. So the depth of field is pretty deep in this one. Let's actually also check out the composition because I know that depth of field is also an option in this module. And so let's see. Love it. And I see Dave and David are having a great conversation about how safe these images are to use in client work. Um, the great thing about Firefly is it's trained all on Adobe stock images. So that means it is totally okay to use in client work. It's all licensed. It's not scraping the internet for copyright like images. So yeah, definitely can use it in your client work or just for vision boarding like we're doing here. And Robert, I'm so glad that you're getting good results in Firefly as you're working alongside of us. I, so exciting to hear. I want to see all of your work I know, too. that would be so great. Can you all do us a favor? Like if you choose to post this I think it'll be live. I'll look. Yeah, yeah. for sure. I want to see. Exactly. And Augustine, maybe you can try out um, prompting blue fruit. I wonder if it'll just be blueberries or maybe it'll turn some, I don't know, apples blue. Right. But you could create that if you wanted to. We'll figure it out. Yeah. I love to use Adobe to create surrealistic vision. It's fun. It's so much fun. I love that image. I kind of want that as my computer background now. I'll send it to you. Okay, I love it. It's kind of got that nice gradient sunset feel. Exactly. Gorgeous. So let's go ahead and what am I doing? Oh, oh, I did I? Yes. Yes. Okay. Alrighty. I love it. So we're on to the personal vision board now. So we are working towards the collective vision board earlier. And yeah, now we have our personal. We sure do. I love it. So I am once again creating or converting it to a smart object. Smart objects are so Where nice. It's so easy go? to be able to edit it later. I know it's kind of hard to look through all the <laughs> all the different options oh there. Oh my gosh, there it is. I do this all the time where I also just recently started wearing my glasses again. And it's so I funny. I feel like it like adjusts my ability to see sometimes like in a not <laughs> aligned way. I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> oh my goodness, look at that. Okay, so we got the gorgeous ocean cliff with the gorgeous fruit. I love it. 
Yes, and notice how it also shows you on the right, like when you export the image, it actually saves as Firefly so that you yeah. know what's you know AI generated, what's not. Sometimes I have such a vast um, gallery of my own personal stock photos. Yes, I believe it. As yeah. a photographer, I'm sure you have so many images <laughs> saved. It's probably ridiculous. I might have like over 300,000 wow. images. Wow, that that's a lot. So this is definitely helpful that it names with Firefly and then also that first part of your prompt that it enters. Exactly. So maybe if you wanted to generate something similar again, you can remember what you typed in as your prompt, as exactly. long as you don't rename it. <laughs> exactly. Cool. So now we're starting to get some of the idea of how we want to spend the year. We want to eat well. We want to experience more beauty, natural beauty in the world. You know, check out more sunsets or sunrises. And what's cool is you can't really tell if this is a sunrise or a sunset. It's kind of giving both. I love it. I love that. Another thing I want to make sure that I call into my life is international travel. Wow, okay, that's something I need to do more of. And chat, I see you're tuning in from all over the world, which is amazing. Personally, I've not gotten many opportunities to go out of the country, so that is my goal soon. Maybe not this year, maybe next, but you never know. Oh, gosh, what are those called? Hot springs. Hot springs, love it. There are some hot springs I saw a of Mexico City that are in Mexico City. Oh, cool. And I want to include that in my personal vision board for this year because I really want to go there and I'm so curious if, whoa. Whoa. Okay, those colors, (laughs) an audible gasp, I love it. (laughs) I mean, Catherine in the chat has a great question. Do you ever license or sell your images as stock images? Catherine, (laughs) Catherine, yes, yes. You know what? That's actually another thing I need to include on my vision board this year because it's been an intention Uh that I've been holding for so long. And I've had like one off, you know, sales of some of my own stock images where companies will come to me and say, hey, we love X, Y and Z images. Can we license these from you? But I've been holding myself back. I need to upload my stuff. Well, onto this is Adobe maybe Stock. a little encouragement. Yeah, I mean, I would buy your photos. They're gorgeous. Definitely check out Amina's website, Instagram, all the things. But okay, I'm loving this Mexico City generation. <sighs> this is actually perfect. And it's crazy because with the image of the hot springs in my mind's eye, I actually know what they look like. And they do look pretty similar to this. So I know that there must be some images of it online Um, and this is really cool because it also integrated the pastel colors the shot from above and the photo like presets that I have here in the prompt I love the colors (sighs) and look notice this how it really fits in with my own travel photography style oh my goodness that is gorgeous look at these pictures chat I mean I hope you all are obsessed as obsessed as I am because that is impressive it's like it it the has, chat is hyping you up. They agree with me. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. No, it's so cool because I feel like the more I use Firefly, the more it's also starting to integrate my own style. Totally. Absolutely. And you're never too young, too old to start with Firefly. Like, it's such an accessible and approachable tool. My dad plays around with it all the time. My grandma could play around with it. It's just a matter of typing in some things and seeing what you come up with. It's so fun to use. Exactly. So Dave and, and David, I'm so glad that you all are enjoying learning more about Firefly. And yeah, we're gonna bring this photo, it looks like, back into Photoshop to our personal vision board. Yes, we are. I love it. So this is really coming together because now we have our healthy eating habits, our experiencing of more, you know, natural beauty. And now we have some travel aspirations to include. Yes. It's crazy. Look at how those skies tie into each other, too. And I see a little bit of a pop of orange in the, what were they, hot springs? In yes. the fruit. So fun. What's great is I can also, like, write little notes for myself here. I'm setting this up visually, but I also love to write myself some notes. Like, yeah. 
And something that I want to also include is like a really fun journaling practice. I actually. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I love, I see Amina's got a cute little notebook here. I love handwriting. So fun. But also I agree, especially on here, just so you can jot down little notes to yourself and remember, I thought you were going to pick Comic Sans. I panicked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would have been a troll if I had done that. But you know what? I actually love Comic Sans because it's it's culturally relevant in a way that everybody knows not to use it. But it's funny. And so they use it ironically yes. all over social media now. I totally. know it's trending on TikTok, which is Lots hilarious. of memes, lots of memes. And Dave, you are not alone. Dave said this is his first Adobe Live. Congrats. Welcome. Little secret, this is my first Adobe Live on this side of things. So we're in this together. Virtual fist bump. So fun. And I hope you come back for more. We have these these fun sessions in San Francisco on Thursdays. Little plug, I'll be back next Thursday designing and hosting. So Amina is just my fun little buddy I get to try this out with. We're having a blast, We're honestly. We're having so much fun. I feel like you're really bringing out the creativity in me, so thank oh, you. Oh, well thank you. Your photos <laughs> are just inspiration. This has been fun and easy. Yeah, Mexico City, so, so cool journaling prompt for you yes where is somewhere that you want to travel that you didn't think it was possible and I want you to reframe that as a affirmation so okay you know this is a tip and trick that I actually am grabbing from my friend Ramona Radiant oh. Ramona. She is a journaling queen. That's awesome. And um, we, ho we hosted a creative workshop at my studio last weekend called Flow wow. Space. Oh, that's fun. Uh -huh. Like wellness, creativity, journaling, meditation, all that. I love it. And So um, on brand for you, clearly, yes. and for what we're doing here. Exactly. And what's so cool about journaling and writing something like that and then reframing it as an affirmation is that you actually get to reintegrate that into your your life. So Absolutely. I can say I want to travel to the hot springs in Mexico City or I could say I have plans to travel. So I love it. I have travel plans to to the hot springs in Mexico City. To And the Robert said hot springs, Rocky Mountains, Colorado. That is actually, Ooh. I've been to a hot springs in the Rocky Mountains in Colorado. My only experience, but it was cool. That's so cool. It's I fun. love that. Yeah. And I... All the exclamation points, too. You know, I got really excited about me this Me, too. <laughs> I'm the kind of person that definitely uses too many exclamation points in any email and any message I send. Just so you know I'm happy and in a good mood. Yes. Maybe throw in some emojis if you're feeling crazy. Exactly. Yes, manifesting 2024, Jacob. It's only February, almost March, but never too late to start. Right. All right, love it. We're duplicating our text, it looks like, here to write some more affirmations for these images so we can remember and probably look back on these throughout the year. Kind of keep yourself in check, a little bit of an accountability action. Exactly. This is something that I'm writing now and it's going to be like converted into the back of my mind so that I don't have to think about it. And right. it's just like integrated into my reality. So I can say I have travel plans to experience more beautiful nature. I have travel plans to the hot springs in Mexico City. Love it. I have plans to, you know, eat healthy meals every day. Yeah. I definitely need to get back in my healthy eating grind. I went out of town this past weekend, and so, you know, I need some more fruit and some more vegetables in my diet. <laughs> you have plans to eat more fruits and vegetables. I have plans to eat more fruits and vegetables today. <laughs> Forget about the donut I <laughs> ate this morning at the office before this. <laughs> exactly. And make sure you add all the exclamation points because... Or smiley face. Like, yeah, happy... <laughs> Eating healthy is fun. Or exactly. we're making it fun and aesthetic for you. Exactly. I cannot believe these are AI generated. This is insane because. Yeah. Look at these. I'm so shook. So gorgeous. I'm actually shook. Um, what, another thing I wanted to make sure that I show you all before we finish is the generative expand feature. Oh my gosh. This is a game changer. 
even if you bring in your own photos, I mean, even for Instagram with my, you know, cell phone pictures, I love to expand my photos to like fit my wallpaper size or also to remove people from the backgrounds of pictures. Photo bombers, you know, get them out of here. Make it Instagram worthy. Yes. (laughs) I'm so excited to see how this looks. I am too. So we just created this AI generated, you know, pseudo hot springs that exist in Mexico City. We've got a beautiful sunset. looks like a mountain in the background. And it looks like it is smack dab in the center of a town that doesn't exist, but it does in our mind's eye now. Yes, Um, it does. So... What I did, I just clicked into this crop tool here, and I just expanded the canvas of what is here on the page. As you can see, there is this toolbar here. It says, what would you like to generate? Optional. I do want to just see what happens when we click generate as is to see how intelligent this AI is. I love to do that. Fill the space. Yeah, no prompt work. You can just see what it comes up with. And Amina, while this is generating, do you want to recap just a little bit of what we've talked about today? Just to remind everyone so that they can go on and create their own vision boards. Absolutely. So today's workshop, we actually have gone through a workshop of, you know, vision boarding and creative visualization using Firefly, Adobe's new AI power tool to generate text to image Images (laughs) (laughs) Images yes. <laughs> <laughs> that fit within the realm of how we want to see the rest of the year go, this new year, new astrological year coming up. And we used those images to start two vision boards, one for the collective, so our communities, our all cities, of all of you, us. You, me, chat. And then one for <laughs> individuals. So this is like for me, how I want to conduct myself this year. So big picture goals for the city and the community and individual goals. And now we have just created- How amazing is this? (laughs) I (laughs) love it. We expanded this gorgeous AI generated image Uh and it just, it did an amazing job of filling the space. And if you go to the right toolbar here, you actually see different versions of what was created here. I love seeing all these options. What's the prettiest? I think I really like the first one. The first one is great. I like the subtlety of the pink because then it really, I feel like, focuses in on the hot springs. Mm -hmm, Exactly. And so let's go ahead and take this one step further. Let's use the lasso tool. And you know what? I'm feeling surrealistic, so I let's... Let's create something here. I want to see like some hot air balloons. So all I did was use the lasso tool to highlight this area and instantly Firefly is also integrated into Photoshop and it gave me the option to prompt it to add something here. So let's see, hot air balloons. It's great for adding and for removing for any first time Firefly or Gen Phil users. Um, yeah, that is something that I use in my workflow all the time. So I wrote uh, hot air balloons in the foreground and some sporadically in the background. That's wow. not super descriptive, but I'm curious We'll see to what see. it comes up with. Yeah, and then since we're wrapping up soon here, I'd love to see what this looks like back in your vision board. Yes. Yay. I can't wait to see it all come together. These have been so fun. Chat, I hope you've had a lot of fun too. I've had fun watching Amina work her magic. So this is actually pretty good. Some hot air balloons. It understood what I meant when I said some sporadically in the back. Totally. They're not like all in a line. There's some depth to it. I said I wanted some in the foreground, some in the background. I think that these two options here are the best. I I think I'm going to go with this middle one. That's incredible. And then let's go ahead and export this so that we can um, share it in our 
Adobe Live Firefly. Yeah, awesome. let's just go to Adobe Live. Well, while Amina, you're exporting this, it has been so much fun to chat with you and to make some vision boards chat. Thank you so much for joining us. Up next, we have Maggie and Ted, and we're just going to keep this party going. I had so much fun with you all today. Um, Maggie is going to be talking about the life of an icon with Ted, and they were a pretty fun dynamic duo last time, so I'm excited to see what they have to come up with. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. So fun. Bye. <laughs>
Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another session of Adobe Live. Today we have our friend Megan Johnson with us, who is a branding and digital designer. Tell us a little bit more about you and what are we gonna work on today? Yes. Hi, everybody. It's good to see you guys again. Um, yes, I am a branding designer based out of Atlanta, Georgia, and love being on Adobe Live. Um, yeah, I spend a lot of times doing branding, web. Um, and a little bit of everything else. I'm sure designers can understand that. You never, your job is never limited to just one thing, you know? I always need help. I was calling yes. friends like, hey, I need branding advice because I don't know what to do. So, yeah. <laughs> yes, I got you. But yeah, so I love being a branding designer. Shameless plug to my last Adobe Live in the top right corner. Um, it's just, it's fun and it really, you know, scratches the itch in your heart to be able to like work with a lot of people mm -hmm. oftentimes brands are really personal to people so i love getting to like you know create visuals for those things you yeah. know i feel more important than i should be and i love it but yes so my company that i own is all caps design shameless plug um you can find <laughs> us on instagram and on our website um working with a lot of brands right now which is so fun um that are going to be on the website soon so, all caps. Yeah. I like the name, you know, very Thank serious. You. All caps. You all know, caps. I was like, we're going to make this work. All caps. Yeah. We're going to position you well. All capital letters. All the things. Okay, yeah. so what we're talking about is mm -hmm. my favorite thing ever, Ted. We're talking about iconography. Iconography. It's my favorite. I've loved it since forever and um, <laughs> haven't always been good at it. But. Before we jump into that, what is iconography? Okay, yeah. Yes. So, um, I'm sure everybody everybody knows what icons are. You've definitely seen them. Mm -hmm. um, they're basically tiny visuals, um, tiny graphics that can. Um, what am I trying to think of the word? It's Why? like the apps design website. Mm -hmm. You have those like icon design, right? Like yes. Like uh, famous, like the all the apps that we're used to, all the icons, right? So is yes. That, am I correct? Yes, one hundred percent. It's the tiny visuals that help get information across without having to be wordy. So nice. um, I think we all know that, like, if you look at a page full of words, mm -hmm. it's like really easy to get overwhelmed, and nobody wants to read just like a million words on a page, and so. Um, icons make things a little more accessible and easier mm. to read, and they're so cute. They're oh, little nice. and cute. So excited! So it's like when I get like a, a form of like bunch of words, it's sometimes really hard to tell what paragraphs talking about what. But if I see the icon, I was like, oh, so this part is about like your information, about right. your website, or about cameras or other skills you have. Yes, exactly. The breakdown. Yes, it kind of it kind of visually breaks up all the monotony, you know what I mean? Cool. So yes, so we're gonna design icons. Um, obviously, you don't have to, you know, some icons are used out of brands, but I'm a branding designer, so we're gonna talk, it, uh, talk about them in terms of a brand today. So I have this um, brand that I've made up. I wish this was a thing. I wish I owned a floral company in Atlanta, but I don't, <laughs> but that's okay. So this is a florist company that we're gonna design our icons for today. Um, and we're going to kind of dream about this catalog um, and kind of if this flower company had released um, like a flower care guide. Um, this is their table of contents right now and it's sad and it's just words and nobody wants to look <laughs> at it. And so we're going to make it a little bit better. So we're going to try to design some oh. icons to kind of fit in that. Nice. <laughs> it's so funny because nice. like, that's how usually I would just type words and I was like, this looks good. And, yeah, I, yeah, and my yeah. friend was like, I was like do better. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Well, <laughs> okay, so I kind of wanted to jump into, I'm nerdy and have a science ish background, so I'm sorry if this doesn't interest you, but kind of like the science behind icons mm -hmm. um, and what we're going to base um, all of our designs off today. So um, there's something called visual balance that everybody, you are aware of it, even if you don't know what it's called. Um, it's basically the idea that um, if things, it doesn't matter if things are the same size, they need to look the same size. Mm. So I don't know if you, you know true center, how something's like centered on a page, it doesn't actually look centered, it usually needs to be like a little bit higher or a yeah, little bit, I know. you know? Yeah. So that's kind of what we're gonna talk about and that's the same thing with icons. So like if you can see here, we have like a square and a circle and they look, you know, similar in size, but when oh. you actually draw the lines, they're actually, the circle's actually bigger um, because those rounded edges actually kind of shrink um, shrink the shapes. So like I can show you kind of an example of if we made these the exact same size. Let's see. So it's better to have them exactly the same size. Well, it's better to have them 
not the exact same size. Not exact same size. Like this is them. Let me get the right colors here. So yeah, you, you so can, fast. <laughs> oh, <okay>. it's magic. <laughs> You're so nice. So this is like uh, this is the circle and the square that are the same size, and you can see that the circle, or the square looks so much bigger. So much heavier is what you'd properly say, I guess. It does. Oh, yeah. So oh, anyway, fun sweet. little nerdy fact for you guys. Visual oh. balance. Yeah. You Visual like balance. I like that word. Yes. And it's in everything, too. You know, like, um, in any basis of, like, art composition or digital design composition or website design, they mm -hmm. all you know, have visual balance in some way. In many a way. But anyway, a little nerdy, a little fun. No, no, it is. It's little fact. Bit. Fun fact. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so there's a million different icon sizes for good reason. The general general rule of thumb in brands is if you design icons in a certain size, you don't necessarily manipulate them to be a different size. Mm -hmm. You would, like, redesign them in that size. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? So, like, if you have a, obviously, if you have a line that's, no, sorry, hold on. If you have something um, that's stroked this size, mm -hmm. but then you blow it up. Oh, my word. One second, you guys. It's okay. This is, like, really cool. It's, like, icon science. I like what Waze is, you know? Yeah, I hope this is interesting to some of you because I kind of like the, like, reasoning behind things, you know? I don't want to just oh, do it just to yeah. do it. It's, it's, it helps you. The more you understand it, the more it makes sense and then, like, helps you with the design down the road, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I feel like it gives us credibility, you know? Like, mm -hmm. we're not just throwing pretty things together. We're like, That's there's true, a little yeah. bit of a science to this, you know? Like, understand why it works and why it looks beautiful or why it doesn't work. Like, yeah. It's very important. It helps a lot. Yeah, absolutely. And so, yeah, so this is just kind of something to note, um, which is why you have, you know, you design in lots of different sizes. Um, you can do them any size. These are, like, common sizes that people use, I would say. Mm -hmm. So 24, 32, 36, all the way up to 256. Um, we are going to design icons today, spoiler alert, um, in 64 by 64 pixels. Nice. That's what we're going to do. But yeah, anyway, just a little bit of the science kind of behind what icons are and why they exist. Yeah, interesting. They're very interesting. They're, ah, they're, they're ready for this. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Hopefully we can learn something. Um, I do not claim to know everything about Illustrator. I wish I did. But <laughs> so I'm also open to tips if anybody has, you know, things that they mm -hmm. want to tell me. They're like, Max, don't use the pen tool. Use other things. Okay, so like I said, we have this brand. Um, I am over in Adobe Express now, and we're going to try to fix this. This Make it index. more interesting. Make more it character. More, interesting. More, more character. More brand identity to it. Yes, for sure. I am a strong believer, and mm -hmm. I am biased because of how I am, but I am <laughs> a strong believer that if you have a good consistent brand you want everything to be consistent that so is true. you want your icons to be you know match the vibe and you want you know everything to work together that's what makes a good brand it's kind of like you go into a store you want to make sure like it has a lot of different elements in it but it has a very strong uh, yes. identity right? everything has like a main theme into it right Absolutely. so you don't feel like whoa how come this part looks so different like, yeah. it doesn't feel it's like coming from the same yeah uh, company right absolutely i think a store is a good example yeah. like if you go to Publix, you know how Publix is like branded yeah everything's branded mm -hmm. or grocery stores that have their like own brands it's like very clear that they all you know exist together anyways all that to say these are the prompts we're going to work for so we're going to try to design some icons based off of these different prompts so we have this is flower based this is about planting cutting growing flowers so knowing your area, soil types, situation, selecting your flowers, flowers obviously, water care, how much to water, sun exposure, and trimming your flowers. So we're gonna try to design icons for those things. Icon. Yeah, the comment in the chat says the, the color palette is gorgeous. So uh -huh. can't wait to start. Let's Thank you. Oh jump Publix, into it. yeah. Publix is not on the West Coast. That's funny. It's okay, people know it. I'm <laughs> sorry, I forget that. Yeah. Anyway, grocery stores, you get it. Yeah, I'm, I'm... Okay, so what's the, what's our step? Step okay. one, first step. So step one is we're going to just start designing our first icon. Mm -hmm. So knowing your area, I did have some ideas of what we could do for this. I'm open to other ideas, if anybody has any. I was kind of thinking we could lean into, like, it's about soil types, so obviously maybe dirt. However, we don't want just an icon that is dirt. 
So I was thinking maybe <laughs> we could do icon with like a little leaf growing out of it. Maybe mm, yeah. I don't know. If anybody has any ideas, yeah. If you guys have any ideas, suggestions, feel free to type in the chat. Well, Maggie does her magic. Thank you, oh, magic. You're so nice. Huh. But anyways, um, so yeah. So I think it's important. Like we have. A great tool with icon design is, of mm -hmm. course, basing things off of real life. There's a few mm. things. You want icons to be really recognizable so, you know, everybody can understand them. Um, and accessible, obviously, which is what we were talking about with the different sizes. So in this case, we're going to try to make it something that everybody knows. So you can get really creative, but you want to make sure that people know what you're talking about. Nice. Okay. So like I said, um, icons are also really good to create by building shapes upon shapes. Maybe not that large of a stroke though. Okay. Um, you want to use very basic shapes and icons. You don't have to do this, but mm -hmm. um, because they're often really small, the more abstract you get with your shapes, the harder it is to recognize them. Yeah. Um, because your eyes are like, why are there just squiggly lines tiny? So I have this dream of maybe we will... I'm also going to change the color. Oh, I have one quick question from yeah. the chat. Uh, could you show how the grids were designed and what made you design them this way? Yes. Okay. So that's a really good question. You don't have to use anything like this. Um, I made these somewhat arbitrarily. You can also find these online. Like if you Google just icon templates, icon template. a million designers create them and like mm. you can get them for free. So um, yeah, basically, ugh, thank you for saying that. This is actually so important. Okay. So what's important to know, I was talking about that visual balance. This is kind of the basis of that. If certain shapes are obviously, you know, shaped differently than others. Certain objects are shaped differently than others. So like a flower is kind of like tall and skinny. Yes. Whereas like if I was doing, I don't know, a pile of dirt like we're about to do, it's going to be wider. Yep. Um, but you don't want an icon that's this big and then an icon that's like this big because that's crazy. So this helps kind of guide you in designing with the different shapes. Like a guideline that you won't design over broad, right? Like a, yes. like a bleach design, like yes. a safe safe area. Yes, exactly. Like a safe area. Exactly. It's like your it's like your um, bumper bumpers. Yeah, so on making your sure icons. like everything's balanced in this size so it yes. looks great when you like export it later. Yes. Obviously so the dream would be to have an icon that fits this entire square right here. Um, that would be the dream is to have that, you know, all of your icons be that perfect mm -hmm. shape. But that's just not how life works and that's okay. So if you can see here, these are broken up into lots of shapes that are visually balanced within the square. So like this is the tallest and skinniest. Let me raise this um, line weight. So this is the tallest and skinniest, mm -hmm. but this is, you know, obviously shorter and wider, wider but they're mm -hmm. still within kind of the constraints of that square that we created. Um, and you can do it, you know, however you want to do it. This will change based on the kinds of icons you're designing to. The goal is to keep your icons in this square right here, this blue square that I'm making blue. Um, and then the orange are your bumpers mm. so that your bumpers are already set up. So, for example, if I had an icon and then I had text that said, Ted. Hello. This is going to be your <laughs> icon. You would come and put this against what would be the edge of that file, oh. that the icon, but that wouldn't be there, obviously. So everything is perfectly spaced, essentially. It's kind of like the dream, obviously. Um, and it's not so much, it's not technically that easy. Obviously, you'd create, like, you wouldn't put text, like, that close to your icons, but that's kind of the basis of it. Does that make sense? Does that answer your question for the most part? But, yeah, it's, it's basically just, like, keeping... Everything so visually everything balanced. has to be in that blue square of your design. Yes. And then the outer layer of orange is the space that you keep between your funds or other things distance. So it's yes. like a safe distance on it. Yes. And you have the skinny version or the wider version on in the circle. Yes. So like everything's designed to balance. So um, if they want to go find this template, right? They yes. can just type um, icon template, design template. They will find something like this and they can also design one for themselves, right? Yes, absolutely. You can design one for yourself if you want and you can create your own constraints. Um, 
it's obviously based off like your pixels and you just have to kind of play yeah. with it. I can't think of exactly how many pixels this is. I think it's yeah. like four pixels separated in between each one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's because it's like personal choice. Yes. And design. Yeah. So I think that we can go on like with see how you do your uh, do it your way. Yes. And it'll help us to understand that. Oh, why you did it that way. Yes. Okay. For sure. Okay, so like I said, we're going to design some icons. And I'll kind of show you how that is in, an ac- in action, what that looks like in action. Um, so obviously we're trying to design to that outermost square, but we are, you know, sometimes a little more limited in that. You don't want to, it's so you don't have to force a tall, skinny flower to be a square, you know, mm-hmm. because just not everything fits like that. Okay, so for the dirt, I'm thinking obviously we're going to try to use um, different basic shapes to create these. So I started with just a circle and we can always adjust. Um, And I'm going to scale this down by about 30%. And then I might scale it down one more time. I'm just using right click transform scale Mm -hmm. to do this. That's probably about good. I'm gonna make these all the same width just so it helps my brain a little bit, but. so we are kind of basing our design off this little dirt pile. It's funny, I'm making you guys stare at dirt, but <laughs> it's for a point, I promise. Um, I just locked us in place with Command 2. Fun fact, Command 2, Command two. helps lock things into place. Okay, so we're basically just going to kind of create this. We're going to exaggerate any small shape, essentially. Mm-hmm. So a dirt pile, it's, you know... It looks like a V, which you could do, I guess. You could make an icon that literally just looks like like that. that. But we're going to kind of make it a little more cute because it's like flowers and happy. Mm. And so I'm going to use these circles and create um, dirt from these basic shapes. I'm just going to bring these over here. Oh, I see where you're going with this. See where I'm going with this a little bit? We're going to create, like, I might need to move this over a little bit. And we're going to eventually merge all of these and make them look like they belong together. Okay, I might actually scale this one down just a little bit more. How do you do the duplicate? Just like Control C and copy and paste? Or? Oh yeah, good question. Um, I, if you option click and option drag something, well, if I can get it, and option drag something, oh, it'll just automatically. That's cool. The day I learned that is the day my life got easier. Well, it was wonderful. That's today for me. It, <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I don't think I can make your life easier. <laughs> But, um, yeah, that's a game changer because it saves nice. a million. You don't have to Command C, Command B all the time. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to just, um, I'm going to drag these down mm-hmm. and copy and paste these. So we, if we want to edit this, we can without it being destructive. I'm going to select all of these and I'm going to come over here to the Pathfinder tool. There's a lot of ways to do this. Um, I learned the Pathfinder tool, so I think it's, it's kind of like the thing you were talking about earlier with, Um, selective color like you just learn it and then you kind of stick to it you know Um, so I tend to use Pathfinder you can also use shape builder tool which is where you select all of them do shift M or it's this little guy over here and it allows you to select and separate shapes so like I just shape finder that tool right there and it kind of split it up um, this can be, ShapeFinder tool is very accurate, so that's good and can be really helpful um, if you're trying to design really accurate icons, which we, of course, will always try to do. But for the sake of this, I'm going to use Pathfinder because it's a little quicker, a little fun, a little easier. So I'm just going to combine all these shapes with the Pathfinder tool, and I'm going to delete this under layer, essentially. Just like that. Wow gonna connect it with the pen tool and we already have something that's starting to look a little dirt like I think it does it give you a strong grand yeah shape right there yeah a little bit so it's um, we're gonna roll with that for right now we can always come and fix it actually I'm gonna fix it a little bit it's a little crazy I don't like how arched this feels it feels a little too cartoony for me I think mm-hmm. so I'm just gonna smooth it out just a little bit I think this is the problem child <laughs> All right, and then I'm just going to copy and paste them again, bring them down here, Pathfinder tool, select them all together, and then direct select those points, connect them at the bottom. Um, I 
find icons so fun. I definitely like that better. I don't know if you can tell if that's just me being obnoxious, but it just feels like this it's feels a little smooth. It feels now a little it's like smoother. super sharp turn right there, right there. Yeah. The problem child that you yes. identify right there, it does fix it. <laughs> the problem child. Mm -hmm. Anyways, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this over just to kind of show you guys the process, like the shapes that we built up from it, and we'll kind of build off of this side too. Might be good to kind of see both sides of the process. Do you provide the template somewhere on your website? Or? I don't, but I should. If mm, you guys give me, link, yeah. <laughs> I know, give me 24 hours, it'll be on All Caps' website. Um, I'm trying to think of one I downloaded years and years and years ago. Uh, and I can't think of it, but yeah, put this follow me on Instagram. Website. I'll yeah. post it. Shameless plug. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, mm -hmm. and we want to create a um, little leaf, little leaf guy. So what we're going to do is I'm going to come in here with just an oval. I'm going to do Shift C, which I don't remember the name of this tool, Anchor Point Tool. Anchor and this point. turns points into harsher points rather than curved points. I actually want this to come in a little bit. I have a vision. Stay with me. Stay with me. And um, I have drawn this so many times, which is why I'm kind of just winging this part of it. Um, little leaves and things, I feel like, you know, it's ingrained in my brain. Mm -hmm. But I kind of have a, I have a dream. Let's see. <laughs> if we bring it here, icons are also just like so, look at it, play with it, and you're like, mm, that just doesn't work. Yeah, and I think fix it's, like, it. uh, it's very similar for me. Uh, because I, I never designed icon before, right? Before me, it's like a very similar, like when I create stuff on Photoshop, it's like yeah. whatever have the strongest silhouette that your brain automatically understand what it is works the best. Yes. Right? So the same, uh, I'm assuming the same with the icon. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Recog recognize, recognition is good. Like, oh, I see the two leaves. Oh, two little leaves. You see together. where we're going with yeah. this? Yeah. Wow. Anyways. So fast. This will take me like five hours. Oh, just no, like, you could do it. How I do swear. I do, this? <laughs> I do think after some point in time, the pen tool is part of my hands at some point because I use it every day of my life. Oh, what did but you anyways. do there that duplicate the line straight up? Is it the same way? Or? Oh, yeah. So I, what I did is I just came in here mm -hmm. and hello, and I used the direct select tool and I selected this tiny little point here and moved it up and down. Oh, I did. nice. Very simple. Yes. Okay. So we're going to come in here, center our icons, and then I'm going to connect these to this. And we're obviously going to have to adjust. So already you can see that's starting to look like something, wow. you know? It's it's definitely the stroke's going to have to come up a little bit. She's so cute, though. <laughs> so a couple different thoughts I have. Yes. Um, I don't – I think the leaves and the ground are looking a little – disproportional. <laughs> so mm. I think we're going to shrink this down a little bit, which is okay. And we're going to make our dirt more of the main focus since this is about soil. Oh, I don't know. I didn't even think about that. I don't know. Just thoughts from all caps, but okay. We're going to bring this up a little bit. And what we're going to do is actually just create a square, a rectangle. That's not a square, a rectangle. And see what this does for us. So already I think it's like, obviously it's very, you know, geometric. But I think that's okay because icons, you know, at least it'll be recognizable and that's what we want. So we'll start there and see kind of if, if it looks good with the rest of our icons. Selected points cannot be joined as they're invalid. Oh, no, they're not. Friends just say, oh, now I'm really appreciating the orange framework. Oh? It's <laughs> so a very, very key Thank important you? role right there. Yeah. Yes, I know. Sorry, I should have said that at the first time. Like, I didn't just make that up, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, look how cute. See, it already is starting to look like yeah. an the icon. Thing, the, the rectangle you just add make me re remind me of, like, the, the bottom of, like, the garden outside the frame, yeah. right? The dirt, like there's a, the frame. Maybe that's yeah. why I did. Maybe that was my subconscious being like, I need it. It's like a little Some flower box. Yes, and my brain triggers. Is, oh, yeah, I understand what that is. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to kind of leave him where he is. And we're going to come to 
flowers. Um, and we'll design as many of these as we can. We might not be able to do all of them, but it's okay. I may or may not have backup icons if all else fails. You got these. Okay. I'm saving you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so a couple thoughts. Mm -hmm. I think we want to do a flower. We want to do, like, as basic of a flower as you can get. Right. So I'm thinking, like, the flowers that you draw when you're little, like when, you know, like you just sort of a little yeah. circle and a little, you know, except obviously maybe a little more professional looking. Um, so I'm thinking of kind of three parts of this. Obviously we have leaves, we have a stem, and we have the main part of the flower. And so I think we'll kind of lean into that a little bit. For the main part of the flower, we're gonna make it super understandable. So I just duplicated this. Mm -hmm. I'm copying it and I'm rotating it 45 degrees and I'm going to do that again. No, that's not what I said. When you, when you say that, like draw the flower like how everyone used to draw, I was like, is that like a universal language that everybody just draw flowers, house, grass, and sun yeah. at the corner? Yeah, like, literally. Nobody taught us to draw it like that. We we're just like, oh yeah, that's exactly how it's gonna look like. No, yeah, that's exactly what, I mean, you know, everybody know everybody yeah. thinks of it. Well, so I think if you need design help, just go talk to little kids because they've got it right because- They got a lot of great ideas. They got a lot of great ideas. Have you seen that blog and it's like, um, kids should name everything in the world oh, because no, kids mean. come up with such creative they names. Do. I love it. I love that little blog. Oh, look at the flower. Okay, so obviously we're we're getting on to something, you know. I think this definitely needs to be wider now that I'm looking at it. Oh, can I ask what about radio repeat? You can do radio repeat. Because of the way I'm doing this, I'm converting them all into shapes. I don't want all of the lines... I have to play with it a little too much to do radial repeat, in my I opinion. See. But you can definitely use it. Um, it's it's a great way to do it. You can. It's a personal preference on the it's design. It's a personal styles. preference. Yeah. It's me being angsty, but you can come here, go to. Uh, da, 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 da. Where is it? Repeat and radial, and it'll do just that for you. So I that's, see, it's the, I can tell the difference when you put them like yes. next to each other, yeah. Yes, and it, you can do this, which is really helpful. Look how fun. <laughs> but anyway, um, and it's just it's just a personal preference because I might end up, I'm not, it might not end up super uniform mm -hmm. in the end, right. which is why I tend to... Full control. Yeah, yeah I'm a control freak, I guess. I didn't know, but... <laughs> everybody's everybody's design, a little yeah. bit. <laughs> just be this fine angle tilted right there. Yes. <laughs> Slightly <laughs> different, yeah. We all have a little bit of a problem. It's okay. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to try this. Mm -hmm. Transform, rotate 90 degrees. Select all of these. Transform, rotate 45 degrees. That's more what I was going after. I don't know if y'all can see the difference, but it's kind of what I was envisioning. Mm -hmm. Okay, same thing. We're going to select all of these, and we're going to make these, you know, Pathfinder tool. Delete the center. And now we need to add a center in our flower. We could have kept that one, I guess, but I didn't like how spiky it looked. So mm -hmm. It felt a little crazy. It's very different. I think it's really, really important with icons to kind of step back from what you're doing because mm -hmm. you have to imagine these will probably be like this size on a page. I know you guys can't really, you know, totally see that, but um, they need to be readable from far away or else they're not doing their job and that's not good. So yeah, we're gonna come in here, center this, I think, like I said, it's always good to keep things consistent. So we're going to steal this same shape that we used over here with the leaves in this flower. And I'm actually just going to legitimately steal it. Hold on. Like this. No. Ungroup. I grouped this so many times. <laughs> it happens. Ugh, the struggle is real. Okay, fine. We'll just do it the hard way. Okay, so I'm going to steal this. Transform. Ungroup. Okay, we're going to create our stem. We're going to steal. I mean, do we still have the dirt? I deleted the dirt. I think the dirt might be a lot for uh, okay. this. I see, I see. 
Oh my gosh, you guys. I deleted our icon. Hold on. <laughs> Is that way, what you were saying? Yeah, I was that way, the original icon. You're so, you're like, Maggie, you're ruining it. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I just that. like to have a copy of everything. No, I do like too. A I, copy of the copy. That too. would have been a terrible mistake. I just love copies. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. A copy of a copy of a copy. Yeah. Literally. <clears throat> okay. So like I said, we are going to try to work within the constraints of our grid that we've created for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put our leaves at the bottom. We're working on this rectangle. The tall skinny. Mm. Because I don't feel like I feel like a flower. Well, flower is yeah. tall, right? Yeah, it's it tends healthy, to be taller. You know? Yes, all yeah. of the above. So we're just going to come in here and start doing some adjusting of... Oh, it's looking so cute. Kind of cute, kind of fun. In the bottom. Okay, and then in just a second, once we get this one designed, we're actually going to jump back into Adobe Express and kind of, um, I'll show you a little cheat code I have that makes this also a lot easier. All right, so we come here, we're gonna steal that. <laughs> Transform, reflect. Okay, the leaves might be a little too big still. I don't know, what do you think? Should we make our leaves smaller? Are they distracting? Should we make our flower just a little bit bigger maybe? Yeah, maybe make the leaves a little bit slow, uh, smaller. Not slower, slower. Slower. A little slower. <laughs> also might be good. Just me. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, yeah, make the leaves a little bit smaller. Okay. Yeah. So we definitely want to keep um, our constraints in, obviously, the template that we created. Oh, yeah, because it is going to be a small icon yes. that we're looking for. It's like something you want to recognize right away. Yes. But what we're going to do is mm -hmm. shrink the width of them. This is kind of like a play into that visual balance thing that I was mentioning earlier. Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to shrink our leaves a little bit. Oh. So it's the same shape that we're like carrying over, but it the leaves are a little less distracting. I don't think bringing this all the way up is the move. That feels like a little too yeah, much too, to too me, big, yeah. which is kind of why, I mean, you guys let me know. I mean, I like I'm, it. I like the direction. Opinion. Yeah. Yeah. I like like you skinny like so you give it like a completely different feel. It feels smaller, but not it's still the same right thickness of the line, right? Right. Yeah, and it still touched the design template, so everything looked good. Yes, and we're mm. still in our rules, and so it's all the things. So I think already these are starting to look really good, you know, together, and we Yay. can kind of. Oh, they're not the same line weight though. Let's see. So. We can play, this is what I was gonna say, we can kind of yeah. play with the line weights here. Something I love, this is my comment to the developers of Adobe, this is the best thing they've ever done, is you can actually directly copy and paste into Adobe Express. Oh, what? I didn't know that. Yes, so we have our little icon already there, look at her! Yeah, quick question. Uh, yeah. Susan asked like, what if you make it smaller leaves, well, which we did, and maybe not the same size? Would it would it oh. break the template, like the design rule you have for you? Or? I see what you're saying. Yeah. Like, if, Is it better to keep it similar size? So I think, honestly, it depends on the brand that you're working on. It, it's Got a little you. more quirky to have, mm. like, leaves that are a different size, which could be fun. I think in this case, because I am trying to keep things super constrained, one yeah. thing you could do is bring one further up, maybe, it could be kind of tasteful to have it touch that and then this one come up a little bit. Oh, I see. Yeah. More like that. Like, that's kind of festive. I do think, I mean, I don't know. Oh, it's your design, right? Yeah. So we're just but if you guys think that looks better, <laughs> I'm here for it. Obviously, it's good to get user research. But, um, yeah, you can kind of play with it however you want. If that might be a good thing just for sake of what we're doing, let me just... Let's let's look at that. What that could look like, actually. That definitely. That's a good point. Who said that? Suzanne? Is that what yeah. you said? Or Susan? Um, that would definitely add more like visual interest, which would be good. Let me show you kind of like a way around that. You could make our flower icon bigger, obviously, to fit the constraints like what we were talking about. So like roughly about there. And then come in here with the different size leaves. 
and that could be a cute way of doing it. So you're still within your constraints that you've given yourself. Oh, I see. But it's just like a different way to do it. Like I said, I feel like it's a little I like I like flower the flower heavy. Like, yeah, okay, I see what you mean. But you know what I mean? And that does yeah. create visual interest. I like it like how doesn't matter like how you change the size and proportion, you're still following the template. Yeah. The guideline that you set for your design. So it's, it's yeah. really cool. Well, it's also kind of fun because there's a million different styles, right? Mm-hmm. Like um oh somebody say whimsical versus symmetrical. That's oh, a good way to say that. Yeah. You know, like a little more concrete versus whimsy which is kind of nice um yeah and i think this is when you could play with if you wanted to do icons that were a little more stylized color wise you could do Mm -hmm. this is when you could switch things around like that too there's a million things you can do you know so they'll depend on the designer and how your clients want it yes for sure for sure my client this time is very agreeable because nice. she we're made we made her up, but still. <laughs> no, she's real. She's real. <laughs> I I imagine it, but yeah, I, I like how you can just do Control C and Control yes. V to paste it directly onto Express. Yes, that is really cool. If so, this is a good this is a good thing to mention. If you were designing icons that were going to be used all the time, mm-hmm. you would want to add them into libraries, which is which we'll get into in just a second. Oh, okay. um, I'll show you how to use libraries. But if you just want to do quick tests like this, or you have, like, let's say this brand will never ever use this icon again, mm-hmm. you can just do like a quick copy and paste in it. You don't have to go through all the like the libraries or the exporting or like make it a part of your brand, mm-hmm. um, which is just kind of a helpful thing. I like that Adobe Express does that. That is so cool. Yes. Um, so what I think I'm going to do, I like the way this is looking. Let me know, let me know what you guys think. I think it looks really good. I think they're looking, starting to look yeah. kind of cute. I'm wondering if the line weight might be a little too thick. So maybe we take it down just a little bit and see what it looks like. And then you guys let me know if we think we should do the thicker ones or the thinner ones. Personally, I prefer the thicker ones. It's easier yeah. to see, you know. I think you might be right. Yeah, but maybe maybe if you're adding more colors, maybe the thinner line works better. Yeah. Because it's more color heavy, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think the thicker ones are definitely matching more with this brand than these. Mm-hmm. Match the fonts. For Match me, it's very font. easy to see and understand. Yeah. 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 I feel like these, yeah, I feel like these icons are a nice little tribute to the sans serif fonts we have going on here, but... Okay, cool. So for water, <laughs> sorry, Francis said is when our imaginary clients give us a hard time that we might want to take a break. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Just we need to take thicker. a break. Yeah, <laughs> so that's thicker. They, they say thicker. Thicker looks great. Thicker, yeah. awesome. We're doing it. Back to two points, two point strokes. Amazing. Okay, so like I said, mm-hmm. um, we are gonna try and do a few more of these. The rest of these don't will not take very long, so I think we can do this, all of them in the right time. Okay, water, super easy, I think, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna make an oval, and we're gonna make a little water droplet. Oh, maybe, maybe, I don't select know. Select the anchor point, lower it, that's, that's a universal water. Universal icon. water, <laughs> if you look at that, you're like, for, well, hopefully one of your first, you know, impressions is that it would be water. Another way to do this is to do it with the shape finder tool mm-hmm. and um, come in with the polygon tool, do three points to create a triangle, a massive triangle. <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> we're going to come back into our template. So yeah, I just, I just think icons are very tedious for sure, but I just feel feel like they're so rewarding because they're like accessible and then also you can create literally anything it's also a little bit of like a puzzle to me I think because Mm. you have to figure out like what are the basic the most basic shapes to create these icons that people will understand it's like minimalism at its finest So I'm basically just gonna make this tangent to this line by keeping the constraints. (laughs) And then we're gonna do Pathfinder, combine them, and then we will have to, we would have to correct all of those. So it's kind of interesting. It gives you two very different shapes actually. I think this might be the better option for us 
because um, it's a little more geometric. Shape. <laughs> it's a little more, more shape. shape. It's more <laughs> shape. Thank you. I was really losing my words there yeah. for a second. So you guys can tell I have a limited vocabulary, but oh, it's more shape. <laughs> sorry, you guys. It's design all day. Uh, <laughs> greater silhouette. Yeah. Greater silhouette. Yes. Yeah. I'll probably go with the first one because I'm lazy. Like, oh, this will do. This will work. Yeah. But smarter way. Smarter way. Smarter smart, way. Work smarter, smart, work smarter. There's no wrong answer. Oh, yeah. They both look good. What do you, which guys? Which one do you guys like yeah. more? The yeah. left one or the right one? Yeah, which one do you think fits better? I mm. do kind of feel like the more geometric. These were very geometric. But honestly, our soil is not the most yeah. geometric. So no. I think either would work. Okay, so something I'm noticing, um, it's good to look at these all together. I think just that looks looks good yeah it looks good i think it might be a little bit boring mm. comparatively like it's almost too simple so we could do this one of two ways we can scoot this guy over bring it over here and whoa we can erase this line or maybe we just play with scale just a little bit that's cool i, I like don't that. know maybe ba, ba, ba. okay then we're gonna come draw a couple points, and yeah, Joseph and Janelle said right one, which is the one you're working on. This one, I like, yeah. Okay, good. Oh, this I is like, better. I like erasing that line. Just give it like volume. A little bit more, more interest, yeah. maybe. More anyway, water. <laughs> more water. And then I think this might need one more thing, and I think it might just be a little water shine mark. So I Ooh. promise it's not going to stay looking like a pin on Google Maps, but oh, <laughs> I didn't even think like, about it. Don't you think, you think it kind of looks like that? Yeah, I look it upside down, you know. Maybe a little. <laughs> All right, we're going to delete these two points and just give it a little bit of a. Interesting. I don't know. Maybe a little. Can rotate it a little bit. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Let's see what happens. And closer to the edge. Oh, could it be closer to the edge? Closer, closer, like over here. Uh, Maybe we, <laughs> no, I think you're right. I think we need to make this bigger. Get rid of, what does it look like down there? Maybe that's what we need to do. I do think that's a little bit better. Yeah. <laughs> so is it avocado? <laughs> avocado, I know, with the, oh yeah, it does, with, with the, the circle. Oh yeah. It does look like an avocado. Oh, UI is in my brain, I'm like. This looks good, yeah, it looks like the water Maybe a highlights, little. yeah. Something okay. Um, my favorite tool in Illustrator. This is yes. dramatic. It's not my favorite, but one thing I love is if you go to the stroke panel, mm -hmm. which is the one that looks like three little lines over here on the right. There's all different things you can do with strokes. So if I select this water, you know, droplet, mm -hmm. um, you can change where the line falls. Uh. So there's a line that the computer is recognizing, and you can change it to have it on the line, outside the line, or inside the line. And sometimes, based on your different needs, you need different things. Mm. I usually, for the most part, keep it inside, or like on centered. But another thing you can do is you can add caps to your strokes. So at one point, as a little wee designer, I was drawing lines mm -hmm. and was hand drawing circles and oh. like merging them. Jeez. Yeah, no, I don't, she was crazy. She was lost, but it's it okay. Works. yeah. Oh, we have about 12 minutes left. Okay, Which, awesome. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and jump into Adobe Express. Um, but I just kind of wanted to show you guys, you know, how these are all kind of coming together. Um, so two ways of getting these into Adobe Express. You can directly copy them, like I was mentioning, or you can select them and drag them in to what's called libraries. Um, you can create... Libraries are great for branding designers because there's so many different elements and assets that go with different brands. You have your main logos and your secondary logos and mm -hmm. sometimes other logos and um, icons and all of these little things, color blocks that you want to be able to translate into all different um, softwares. Mm -hmm. So if we were going to take these and... Um, oh, isn't my head blocking it? Do what? <laughs> Library. Do what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Library. Library right there. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> That's so fun. I can move it up. <laughs> yeah. And then my head was blocking it. Oh, there, there we go. go. Okay, there libraries. Go. <laughs> so as you can see, I already have the uh, like other brand elements for this brand in here. I have the main logos in here and so on. Ooh, it's I know. a whole Isn't color palette so and everything. Fun? I know. I thought you color palette nerds like I am <laughs> would appreciate that. Um, also, you most of the time don't do all of your logos and all of your colors, but I wanted to this time just for the fun of it, so I did it. 
Wow. Okay, so what you can do, I've already created a group for here um, mm -hmm. for the library, and you can just drag them into the libraries, and they will show up there. Oh. So then when I go to Adobe Express, it'll show up. <gasps> They're right instantly like shut up right there. And then wow. I can bring them in. Is it not just the best thing you've ever seen? That is amazing. Just me. So, I, okay, because I did that, that is the actually water showing. Looks really good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I little, like it. little water yeah. droplets. Do you think it translates that it looks like water? I, it works for me. It yeah. works for us. I think works it works for what we're doing. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and recolor our icons, and then we are going mm -hmm. to bring them into Illustrator or into our library and into Adobe Express to use them. Okay, I wanted to show you guys something really cool. And that is called generative recolor. And I don't know if you know about generative recolor, but it's brilliant and wonderful and you need it in your life. I'm gonna come, I may or may not have other icons to steal for us down here so we don't have to design them. <laughs> Pre-made. <laughs> Pre-made. Pre-made. Just in case you run out of time. But I think you guys kind of get the basis of, you know, how you can design icons and what you can do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just to show you what we got. We've got our soil, knowing your area, flowers, water droplets, sunshine, and trimming. Little scissors, you know what I mean? Um, we could iterate on these all day, you know. There's not usually a right answer. And obviously your clients will have opinions and might have a different um, opinion on that. So anyway. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to try and make these icons really fun, random colors that are kind of similar to our color palette. So as you guys can see, we have our little brand down here. Don't freeze, don't freeze. We have our brand down here that has this really bold green um, that's dark, kind of modern, kind of moody. Mm -hmm. And then these pinks that I'm working with. So I feel like it could be really fun to make these icons, bring some pinks into these icons because it's kind of a little flirty color in this brand, I would say. Mm -hmm. So what I did is I just filled random um, blocks with different colors because of uh, with different shades that I'm after. This is essentially telling generative color that I want not just like one value of colors, I want like lots of different colors. I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna go to edit colors, edit colors and generative recolor and then we can give it a prompt that will recolor it so we can use those colors in our brand. So I'm thinking pinks. I'm trying to think of something that's like largely pink. Um, we could do like Valentine's Day. Like yeah, sure. Day. Just pass and we can use that. Valentine's Day and see kind of what pops up. So then it will give us color palettes that are based off of these Valentine's Day colors. Okay, so fun. Oh, wow. Just create like a whole palette for you. A whole palette. I kind of like where this is going. Whoa. It's, yeah, so I just selected it and it automatically did it. I don't know if that's totally on the mark though. So I'm gonna generate it again and kind of see what it says. I have about five minutes. Okay, awesome. You got it. <laughs> okay, got it. Yeah. And then I feel like this actually really matches with kind of what we were going for. Mm -hmm. So then I'm gonna start recoloring these. Um, I'm going to outline these strokes, object, path, outline, stroke. And I'm going to recolor these with our icons that we've oh, created. Okay. So you're selecting the, the path stroke. Yes. And then change the color to match the one we just generated. Yes. So anyway, it's it's kind of fun. It's, it's a good way. Like, color palettes are hard. Finding and creating really good color palettes oh. can be really hard to do. Um, obviously, if you have strict brand colors, you wouldn't do this. You would just use the brand colors that you've created for yourself. But <laughs> for the sake of time, I am going to go ahead and just copy and paste these in there. <laughs> but overall, I just kind of wanted, wanted you guys to see kind of the possibilities that you can create with icons, what you can do with them, um, how there is a little bit of a backbone to them that you know, it's not just random. There's a little bit of a science to it, which is kind of nice. It gives you rules, so it feels a little more achievable, I think. And yeah, there's a lot of like design elements, rules, and yes. science, and why it works, right? Like all the hidden gems. Yes. You, you wanted to break it down and show everyone to say, hey, this is why I do this. You know? Yes. 
anyway, so I just love it. Obviously, we would spend a lot more time, mm-hmm. you know, really focusing on how to create that perfect, beautiful index. But overall, it's starting to kind of come together, I think. I'm going to align cute. these. Yeah. The colors are a little wacky. I think I would maybe play with the colors a little mm-hmm. bit more. But for the most part, I'm pretty happy with how our icons turned out. I think they look like they all belong together. They look like they're in the same family, at least. And so what happens if you use a color that is not from the same family or palette? Does it like can, can the other designer tell right away? Because I'm not good with color theory. Yeah. So like, you can tell is like, oh, something's off. Like in a brand palette? Yeah. So it's kind of funny. I think it's how recognizable the brand is. So like mm. this brand, obviously nobody knows. And um, nobody, you know, knows my little Atlanta florist brand. But if it was a really recognizable brand, like let's say like Coca-Cola, like obviously they have really bright reds. So if you started seeing funky blues in their ads, you would be like, that doesn't make any sense, you know? Whoa, hold on, wait a minute, something's not right. Yeah, there are a lot of really great tools out there like Generative Recolor that I have been leaning on um, in terms of color palettes because it's, it can just be so hard to pick colors that will work in all different scenarios. Um, but yeah, oh, kind of fun. Cute. So already you can tell that like our index, it's a lot more readable. You know, you play around with the size of these um, to figure out really what would work best with this brand and so on. Um, but yeah, kind of yeah. fun. It's kind of all coming Good together. Job. I think it looks wonderful. Icons can fix all of your design problems. I'm convinced. It, <laughs> <laughs> it makes your brand so much more interesting. I think also if you do custom iconography or if brands have a designer create custom iconography for them, it really can like make or break um, a brand. Um, it just doesn't look so stocky, I think. Um, all of that to say, there's a lot of really cool resources to find icons if you don't have time to design your own. It does take a lot of time, as you can see. Um, there's one place called The Noun Project, which is um, a desi- designers over the years have added a lot of icons onto this website called The Noun Project. And it's a good reference for icons and icon inspo. I look at it a lot. Awesome. Um, just don't claim that your icons are custom if yeah, using you a reference or, reference or yeah. you use them. But you, there's nothing wrong with that, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's, I mean, that's what I've got for you guys. I could spend a whole, you know. We can go all day. Long we could go with that. all day <laughs> talking about, you know. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with us. We we went from like starting with like, you know, just the words, going to uh, use your template to design an icon and then follow the rules and why we do that. And then design all the little tiny icons. But like, even though like they're different, but like they fit and look the same because they follow the template that you show us and then to the generated color, right? Yes. With that. And then now we can copy and paste or just put in the library directly to Adobe Express. It's amazing. Yes. Hey, yeah. So uh, tell us, where can we find you or where should we go hire you for work and stuff? Yes, <laughs> please come hire me yeah. for work. I would love to or work with you guys. Um, so you can follow me on uh, at all caps design on Instagram. It's all caps dot underscore design um, on Instagram. Or you can find us at our website, which is one word, all caps design, LLC dot com. And that's where I'm going to be posting a lot more of our recent work. Um, but yeah, my personal Instagram's attached there. I'd love to be your friend and meet you guys. Yeah. Be design buddies. But thank yeah. you, Maggie. Yeah, Thanks. thank you guys so much. Thanks See everyone you for soon. watching today. Yeah, you know, thank you so much for being here. And then if uh, for anyone who's missing today, just feel free to come back and watch the replay on Adobe Live. And yeah, we'll see you next time. Awesome. Yeah. See you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye.